What is happening, Adventure Nation? It is last Saturday live, December 30th, 2017. The last live of December 17, uh, December. December. Of December. Yeah. December. You know what I meant. 2017, obviously. And uh, I have been drinking. I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> I need to start drinking, but I've got my, my Welch's grape juice. So. Just the wimpy stuff. Yeah, just the wimpy stuff. We, we just crossed the border from, from uh, the United States, so El Paso, Texas, here into uh, Juarez, Mexico. So we're hanging out at Lori's house, uh, Lori's mom's, mom's house, house, and that's where we're going to do the live. So hopefully the stream is decent enough so that you guys can hear and see us tonight. So if it just kind of like sounds choppy, please let us know, and we will have to move areas basically closer to the internet. And right here is like, here's Paul's drink. And I'm going to get my drink because obviously we need to celebrate the fact that it's yeah, the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I know. This looks massive. It's not like I'm going to drink it all. Look at it. This is the size of my face. I'm just going to drink a little bit of it. So, and then we're going to get the chat stuff up here in a second so that uh, we can hang out with you guys. Like I know. We always yeah, go through this every um, single time. We go through this. Okay. <laughs> So, yes, as you can see, we're in Mexico. You can tell probably by the orange wall and the big sun up there. there there's what we're getting in. Okay, my mom is going to totally kick me. And my mom and my mother-in-law, they're like both of them right here. So if you hear like background noise, it's my mom and my mother-in-law, like Paul's mom. So it's the first time they have met each other forever, ever. So this yeah, is the first time. First time in 10 years. So, yes, it's been like full of events this year, to say it like that. <laughs> but um, we'll be here in El Paso until probably the 7th or 8th, something like that. Yes. And then from there, we are heading west. So that is the goal. So, yeah. So if you have any questions, please type them on the chat box, and we will answer as many as we can. And make sure, just the one thing, make sure you copy your question just in case we don't happen to see it or we just scroll through it we can see it after well you can paste it again and scroll through it after it so please copy it and <laughs> Paul just can't find the chat box <laughs> yeah I can never find the chip the whole chat thing see I have here like my video it's, it's just bound to fall like it's I'm gonna spill it I'm just gonna try not to spill it though and see this is my glass and somehow I'm getting like random other glasses here to fill so you cannot see it but my family is right here they gonna see it over no oh, they don't want to say hello they're shy they're camera shy but they're not beer shy <laughs> I'm not <worried> why <laughs> can i not find the chat window tonight Jeez, every single month so we will read your questions once we're ready once paul finds it i'm gonna just do it on the phone so i think it'll be easier to find it here Oh, there's my sister. She's my sister in the middle, and she. Oh, I not find the chat window. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna have to go. Okay. She's my sister in the middle, and she lives in Europe, in Slovakia. So she comes to visit to my mom once a year, or she tries to once a year, and we hang out here as a family every year. So that's why it's so important for us to be here in El Paso, for this area, at that time of the year. So if you click on chat, it doesn't come up. Nope. Yeah, I've got. Uh, yeah, the chat just brings up. It's always, it's always that where it's weird. But I've got it here on my phone now. So I, mean, uh, I don't know you guys. I was always curious. Where are they watching? Why they can never pull up that chat? So right. I just right. wanted to know. Yes, and now you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not that chat box. It's somewhere else. Jan can only stay for half an hour. Jan, come on, get your priorities straight. <laughs> so okay, uh, one person. Well, I'm gonna say one person, but you guys can see us and hear us. All right, right. Can we see that? Miller. Oh, Miller's going to answer the questions. He's already in the chat. So, okay, here's where the chaos starts. So, hello, everyone. Now that we've got the chat up, we've got it up on the phone so we can see the, the stuff as yeah. it comes through. Okay. So, so, hello to everybody. I'm not going to go through the individual stuff because Lorena will yell at me. <laughs> and she beats me enough as it is, so I don't need her yelling at me, too. Hey, greetings from Iowa. Where they high temp you is said you minus weren't. four degrees. Until I find the first question. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. He is onto me. He just wants me to fail. I think it is. No, she said she's going to handle the chat tonight. So, yeah, Laura let's see. says, Paul's hot. 
Tabasco shirt. LOL. This was a Christmas gift, actually. Like, this is a Christmas gift from my daughter because she said she knew I would put it on and tell everyone it's because I'm hot. <laughs> uh, Momo traveling. Hola, buenas noches from Arizona. Felix, Feliz Año Nuevo. Let's say Felix, but that's a name. It's Feliz Año Nuevo. And I'm going to say Año because when you don't put the little thing, it says an N. That's oh. actually a totally different word. Brian. Mwah. Brian and Michelle. He said, where's the kiss? Oh. I know from him or from, from you or from him, but. He wants it from me. You know, he does. <laughs> it's like um, John from Tampa. Bill. Hi from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Beverly. Uh, where out west are you going? So where are we going out west? Okay, so let's get into it. We'll get into some questions, and this is where everything always falls apart, folks. But right now we are in El Paso, Texas. Lori has family on the Mexican side. I have family on the U.S. side. Uh, my daughter lives there. Lori's mom and sisters live here. And we from here are going to meet the Millers and some other folks out in Quartzsite. So for any of you guys who are going to be in Quartzsite or want to be in Quartzsite in January, we will be in Quartzsite about the 12th or 13th for 8 to 10 days. I think that's too early. You think so? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Anything I say, just listen to her. I'm gonna... No, it's because we have to drop off his son and his mom in Phoenix. By On the 10th. 10th. In Phoenix. And then from there we have friends actually in Phoenix area that we're going to hang out with. That is so true. So we're going to spend some time there. And that from is true. there... We will go to Quartzsite. But so Quartzsite's only this far on the map. Yes, and there's a lot of things to go. All right. So the maybe it's the 15th or 16th? So mid-January sometime yeah, the 15th or the 20th. in mid-January, we will be in Quartzsite it's, it's, for a week or so. And uh, we'll be there with uh, Kevin and Laura, uh, Taylor and Beth from the Learning Banks will probably be there. And, of course, we know there's going to be a lot of other people there. So... From there, we're going to head over to – Kevin's going to be out of town for a little bit. Then we're going to head over to the Baja Peninsula of Mexico, and we're going to go down to Cabo San Lucas. And we're going to take the coaches down into Cabo San Lucas, hang out there for what's probably going to be a month total down and back, and then it's continuing up the uh, entire West Coast. So if you're on the West Coast, make sure you're reaching out to us. Uh, say hello, and yeah. hopefully we'll get a chance to meet you guys as we head up the West Coast. Since we're going from Cabo to Alaska, most likely we're going to be very close to the coast. We're not going to go that uh, deep inland. Uh, so, yeah, if you're, like, along the way going to Alaska, let us know. We're going to stick as close to the Pacific Coast Highway as we possibly can. Obviously, we got to jump on and off there a little bit because of uh, uh, weight, height limitations and stuff yeah. like that. So. Um, are you guys coming back through New England in 2018? Man, he's asking this. Probably not in 2018. We are going to be in Alaska in the mid to the end of the summer. So the chances of us getting back there uh, in 2018, no. 2019, we have no idea yet what we're doing. That's all we know is that we're going from Baja to Alaska. Kevin is call, calling it the Baja to Barro or Barro Alaska tour. So. That's all we know. After that, I don't know if I'll be alive. So. Okay. I need that life insurance policy then. Yeah. Alicia is like, thank you for sharing your travel with us. I've been that one with making videos from our vacations. It is crazy time consuming. How, how long does it take to make one video? So. Anywhere from, and it depends. That's, like this video, the yeah. video that I just put out today was 34 minutes. I think that's the longest one we've ever done. And it encompassed three days. And of those three days, it's about four hours of video that I cut out a whole bunch of stuff that you guys don't see. Uh, kind of like making a mini movie or a mini mini travel series. I, I kind of consider each of our videos like a mini travel show. And that's why I kind of keep it in that 20 to 22 minutes. If it was ever picked up and we did a travel, it would be 22 minutes, eight minutes of commercials. That's how it works. So with that being said, if I'm shooting an hour and a half to two hours of video, which is where I like to be for that, or from six hours to 12, 15 hours, depending on like this how much video, I'm doing This last video took was two, out three a days. long time because he had such a hard time putting the video just shorting it to three. Yeah, sure. Shorting, shorting it, trying to get it to 34 minutes was just yeah, brutal. Yeah, it was hard. My mom's over here. She time sucks me for the last. <laughs> Week. Okay, Bernie. Bernie's asking, how is Sean doing in Hawaii? 
Bernie, how did which Bernie is this? How do you know my son Sean? O'Malley. O'Malley. Sean is doing good, and Sean is going to be here with us on the 4th of January. So you will see him in some of the videos. My son, I don't think, has been in any of our videos. No, uh, maybe very, early very, very stuff. Beginning. We yeah. San Diego, like, That's right, San Diego. Like the first one. We were actually taking him. It was one of our first trips, and we were taking him to put his car on the ship to send it over to Hawaii. He's doing great. I don't hear from him much, which I guess no news so is good, good news. He's not asking for money. so. But he's excited to come and say hello. So he's looking forward to coming into mainland, and we're looking forward to seeing him too. So he'll be here very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So Donna, hi, Lauren and Paul. Any good thing in restaurants near you? Absolutely. Uh, again, it's surprising once you start to know what you're what, hanging out with. Kevin and Laura is really good because they seem to be able to find these things. There was a great restaurant here in town called Eloise in, uh, in El Paso that's not really vegan. They have options for meat as well. As a matter of fact, my mom had a hamburger there and said it was, wasn't was a girl's hamburger. It was too big. It was too manly of a hamburger. Is there but such a thing? I don't think so. Is there such a <laughs> thing as too big? That's what I'm saying. On hamburgers? So I'm saying, okay. Um, uh, I thought I wanted to make sure we were talking about hamburgers. I think everybody likes leftovers, isn't it? So maybe it's not about ah, hamburgers, though. But anyways, uh, yeah, El Eloise was one. There's a couple over here in Mexico that I haven't been to yet, but we're going to in the next couple of days. It's tough because my mom, she's a carnivore, meat eater, and mm -hmm. she refuses to try anything new whatsoever. Here, watch like, this out. Literally refuses. Right? Yes. Refuses. Yes. Yeah. So. I don't even think that camera's working. No, it's a laptop camera. So, yeah, you can see his mom. <laughs> I just showed my mom on the camera, and I realized that it's not the camera that I was using. So <laughs> while, uh, while you're answering questions, let's see if I can pull over to the other camera and see what happens. I think it changed already. There you go. Look at it. I think that picture's so better. Much. Oh, my God. Now you can see my yeah. imaging. Okay, so now let's see here. This is the woman here is oh, unwavering. Yeah. And will not try anything new as far as foods, like nothing. She literally, she will not try a vegetarian hot dog, nope. or which burger, is, or, or burger. Nothing. So she'll eat a normal, disgusting whatever, and whatever the. I don't even know what's in a hot dog. I know it's not good, but then the plant-based hot dogs, no, won't even try it. Okay, next one, chasing abnormal. Do you have a solar setup? We do not, and it's something that we want to do. And Lori. That was part of my project here in El Paso was to get caught up on videos and to get our solar set up ready to roll and purchased so that we could have it for uh, Mexico because it's going to be difficult at best to find uh, facilities down there. Good and pitch too. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have that yet. So it, it is something that's in the near future and we just haven't done it yet. Uh, Mr. Kevin Miller is going to be doing it as well. So it's something we're talking about uh, a lot lately and will do very, very soon. Okay, Shayla, are you going to the RTR? The something, something rendezvous, it's in Quartzsite. Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, probably not. Oh we're, we're not big on the, we're antisocial. So <laughs> as far as going to hang out in a huge group. Yeah. Not antisocial really, just anti-group. Um, because I don't know, like, weren't those awkward people in the corner? Yeah, kind of, but I, it's just like, if there's a schedule of stuff to do where there's like, everybody wants to do something all at once, it's just weird for us. So we will be in quartzite, but not specifically RTR. Yes. Let's say that. I mean, we're there specifically to meet, um, you guys. If you yeah, we want to meet as side, many people as possible. That's where we're going to be there. So we'll set much. something up to say, Hey, let's meet at the tree next to the cactus on the side of the road and there's something. gonna be a lot of trees and cactus yeah there's nothing we'll, we'll figure out where next to, to be. the rock yes. in the corner. uh kaylee how is ozzy um good i guess it's like we just got here to mexico and we left him here for two days you're not allowed to read oh, I'm not allowed to read. he's not allowed to read <laughs> uh he has been two days here with my mom my mom has another can so they always have this feud so they're always like family feud. Yeah, bickering with each other. But I saw him right now when I got here, and he was all 
jumpy and smiley. He was happy. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, we bring him every year for the holidays, and usually he's always freaking out. This is the first first year that he was very okay with this. Yeah, he's gotten more used to he's being in different change. environments and yeah. changes and stuff, so that's good. There, there's four dogs here, so that's a little tough on him. He doesn't come out of the, the bedroom too much. But he he's good. Ozzy Ozzy has has become a better, much better traveler. Yeah, uh, Mary or Marie, I think it's Marie. It's like what coat? Yeah, it's cold in here. It's cold. Uh, it's it's gonna be. Well, the last couple of days have been seventy during the daytime, and in the high forties at night, or actually even mid forties at night. Yeah. And tonight, over the next couple of days, it's supposed to drop into the fifty-seven or fifty-eight degrees during the day, and it'll be thirty somethings at night. So yeah. Okay, uh, Jeff, are you going to buy a new RV or are you happy with the one you have? So far, we have been debating this yeah, for so long. Like, so long. I think the last six months we have been de debating this, but we have been looking at a lot of RVs, and I'm talking a lot. Oh. And then we have been in Las Vegas with the Hamptons, as you guys know, uh, and they're buying an RV. So we went with them to check RVs. And we look at a few of them, we're like, should we show anyway? But we never really found something that really cut no. our eye, that really would say, oh, this is the one, we should just go for it. It's like, we really haven't. You know, every and time we see a big brand new coach pull up beside us with the full body paint and everything, and it's rocking, I want to pour gasoline on old Freya and burn it to the ground. But no. I will also say that this coach, as old as it is, it's now 11 years old, 122,000 miles, 123,000 miles on it now has been, again, touch wood, has been amazing. Uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. given us very few problems, if any. Uh, it's all been minute stuff, uh, and it was really early on. The stairs gave us problems early on. 60 bucks, repaired that. Throttle body for 200 bucks, and regular oil changes. I mean, it's really been good, so... You know, we've we've replaced the radio, but not because we had to, because we wanted to, because uh, we went with a DVD system. But it, it's been really good. We would like to be a little bit smaller. Now everyone thinks, you know, we, we want to go from 34 feet to like 28 to 30 feet. And everyone thinks, well, four feet isn't that much. But when we're towing the tow dolly, that extra four feet gives us a, a lot of space for the tow dolly or wherever. And just easy maneuver, more parking options. I, I don't know. It, it's it's been such a great coach. I'm just embarrassed every time. Uh, you know, we see these nice, big, shiny, brand well, new coaches. It's not embarrassed. It's just like I, he just wants a full paint. I mean, inside we love it and everything. He just wants a full paint, not the gel coat. Thing. Yeah, I want full body paint, yeah, flames, that's what and it is. flames, naked girls and no, stuff. No, no, I don't want. No, I don't want that. No. <laughs> but um, just full body paint with you know a nice decent full body paint. I'm the one that was gonna push this year to change the coach. I mean, just like kind of like this winter because I know a lot of people at uh, winter time is when they dump their RVs and we will never buy a new one. By the way, no. So we will not I buy new. I thought this was the time to maybe get something, and I look and I found a few ones. But since we're going into Mexico, the one I got with a brand new shiny RV. And two, then we're going to Alaska. Alaska. What everybody had told us is like, oh, bring an old RV or bring a uh, rental Red one. or a rental because it's like, it's gonna, everything is gonna come apart. So since people have told us that, it's like, might as well bring Freya. And like we said, it has been great. And then we look for another one probably next winter. Yeah. So, so yes, we'd like a new coach, but no, not anytime soon. Yes. Uh, Stuart Little, let the mom say hello, Spanish and English. When my mom escaped, Mary already say hello. So. Vero, <laughs> you're being requested. My mom is, my mom is very They're hiding. shy. Uh, Judy, hey, I'm returning in May and want to RV as a single woman. Have you run into many women RVing alone? Yes, we have, we run, have run into a few. Absolutely. Yes, we have. And again, you'll want to pick, uh, you'll want to be very careful with the areas that you go into. Uh, you, you, you won't want to go into any areas that, that as a single woman, you're going to feel unsafe. And the cool thing about this is, you know, we mentioned safe and unsafe areas hey, in Memphis. Yeah. But uh, what's safe anymore? What's unsafe anymore? Who knows? So you just have to, if you feel uncomfortable with anything, and that's the same thing with us, you just leave. You just pick up and, and leave. But yeah, we, we met a, a wonderful lady, uh, Carol, in, 
Carol with an E on the end. I'm, we're going to have to pause for a second. Yeah, we're going to pause for just a second. Here, Here we go. Here's my mom. Mom, That's say hello. Mom. Say hello in Spanish. Hello. Hola. <laughs> Adventure Nation. Adventure Nation, yes. <laughs> See, she got it right. She didn't say nature. <laughs> um, my little sister is just running away. So come here, Nina. Nina. Just come and say hi. hi. All you gotta do is look. You just gotta come around the corner. Is there there? Hello. Okay. All right. See. There we go. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> so see, Lori doesn't fall, fall too far from the tree. Lori was shy with the camera at first, and I just kept putting the camera in her face until she got used to it. Yeah, the one that is not shy is my male sister. My little sister, she's shy, but I don't know why she's overly shy right now. I mean, you saw her at the Boston. So as a single woman, I say absolutely get out and travel. If you feel unsafe in any area, move. That, that's what's cool about having wheels on your house is that you can move. But I would say there's a lot more safe places in this country than unsafe. And again, with all that's been happening lately, I don't want to get into all that because it's it's a bummer. Uh, with what happened in Las Vegas and the small church in, in Texas, what's safe? You just have to be as, as aware as you can of your surroundings and know that if you're in a spot that makes you uncomfortable, get out. I will say if you're traveling as a single woman, try to uh, use something small, like drive oh, absolutely. something smaller. And if you can drive something small, it's just so easy. I mean, we've seen so many, many, many women just traveling by themselves. But usually they class travel Bs, in a small ones. Class Bs, Class Cs, yes, um, um, small to small towables. Uh, Carol was in a what's called a my pod. It's really just it's towing tiny. her bed. It was tiny, mm -hmm. and she was sixty some odd years old, like mid sixties. Yes. And so very possible. And I encourage you to do it. And if you get out on the road, definitely, uh, you know. Try to run into us, and we would love to say hello. Taylor, when are you coming to see us in Florida? Dun, dun, dun. Florida will probably be the end of 2018, early 2019 again. So mm -hmm. we don't know for sure. Obviously, we buzzed through there earlier this year, and now we're heading over to the West Coast. And uh, so, yeah, I, would lo I, I love Florida, and I love Orlando area. I like Disney stuff. So I want to get back there as soon as possible. Okay. Mama traveling that they're in Florence, Arizona, just outside Phoenix will be great to meet up. So that's something to look forward cool. to. Are you heading to Quartzsite or just again, guys, if you're watching this, if you're on Facebook, it's the best bet because we check in a little bit more on there. If we, if you know we're in your town and we didn't check in, it's probably because I'm trying to catch up on work, but we're, we're trying to check in. I really want to meet everybody. Like I, I, I do. I want to meet everybody. Sometimes, if I'm honest with you, I have to stop him because we will be tired. He has been editing for long hours, and we've been working and driving and everything, and we'll be like all with it, with almost no sleep and all that. He'll be like, oh, we need to just uh, get like touch base with somebody and meet somebody tonight. And I'm like, no, we need to rest. So I'm the one that has to stop him sometimes of doing that because he literally wants to meet everybody. I want to meet everybody. So I, we're going to, I want to try and maybe somehow do more meetups. It's just hard to know who, what, you know, how much, how many people live in a certain area, what area is more dense, but definitely Quartzsite. Let's get together. If anybody's in Quartzsite or you're in the Southwest, Quartzsite in mid January, we're going to be there. Okay. So. Was, uh, then Jeff bleeding. He's like, are you going to hit Homer, Alaska or the, Kenai Peninsula. My wife is a big fan of both. So we're I, going to Alaska. No That's all we know. <laughs> we have not <laughs> we done have, precise we have done any any uh, research at all. We just know other people have done it. We're going to do it. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, we are going to. You know, I'll probably reach out to the folks at Long Long Honeymoon because I think they they look like they do a lot of that. Uh, we'll also reach Just out to advice. to reach out for advice and that. And and of course, if you guys have any advice for us. Uh, you've been there and you know, shoot us a message on Facebook. Or you live know. there. Or local, you live there. Local advice is great advice. And you have a place for us to stay. <laughs> oh. Okay, Gary, this is an interesting question for you. Uh-oh. Do you make money from all your video work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. YouTube money. YouTube money. <laughs> okay, this is how YouTube works, folks. You do a lot of work for, like, very, very very little money. I will tell you our last check 
it was four hundred and thirty eight dollars so mm -hmm. you are not going to make a living on this in this particular space in the rv space now some of it, we're a small channel i mean we're tiny um you know we're just about to cross the fourteen thousand subscriber mark we're a tiny channel uh keep your daydream and and less junk they're at sixty thousand or something plus so so they're starting to get up there uh but subscriber count means nothing it's viewer uh view the views mean everything and are people watching the ads so i'm not allowed to tell you guys to watch the ad before a video but maybe let the video ad run and go do something until the ads till the ad stops and go then facebook go get your facebook or grab a drink before you watch our video that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. makes makes your revenue a little bit more but you make about two dollars per two or three thousand views something like that i really don't know because i didn't want to focus on that because it wouldn't be fun my focus yeah, is on focus. Uh, getting out you know shooting content having fun doing that and then editing it in such a, a way that i feel like you guys feel like we're bringing you along with us and that's a big focus of mine uh, and that's why i do the road shots and things like that i want you guys to feel like you're in the video so again i get off topic really quick you got to keep my add and check yeah, it and i was so, just thinking that he can make more money as a walmart greeter yeah I, absolutely uh, it so, works um, out i figured it out last month which was really depressing and it was like four dollars and 75 cents an hour i'm making doing this so yeah it, it's it can be great some of these young kids that if, if you're seeing kids that are doing two hundred thousand a half million million two million views per video they're, they're killing it. banking they're, yeah, they're killing, killing it. it's just i'm a i'm an old white guy yeah. with a young mexican girl and nobody wants to watch that <laughs> that was such a jeez i'm gonna kick you out of the light it's like but here's the thing well, we're getting there here's the thing sure. YouTube, youtube also changed the rules like two oh, three months goodness. ago so we were doing better, making it worthwhile, at least to pay the fuel for the coach yes. monthly. And we were excited about it. And all of a sudden, YouTube changed everything. Like, and literally, the next month, it was half of what it was. So that, that was kind of like awful. About four to six months ago, something in their algorithms or ad stuff changed. And we went from, we were just about to crest 800 a month and went down to 350. 350 yeah. so and we've awesome. been there for the last three or four months. And now just, this yeah. is the first month, December was the first month we did over 400. It's it's not worth it. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> but I love like, doing it. This new, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, this new season, I mean, we're gonna also, uh, the perks we have used for a year. We know <clears> this one what works, what doesn't work, and yes. all that stuff. So we can recommend you stuff. You feel if only if you feel like buying it for your RV or something like that. It's like we will get a tiny, teeny percentage in Amazon if you buy it right. for our lake, and that will help to just to pay for fuel or something like that in our coach. So if you want to do that and support it that way, that will be awesome. And, and I do want to say thank you to those to those people who uh, do support us on Amazon. And like last month on Amazon, we made a hundred bucks. So there are people that, that are buying products through our Amazon links, and you can do that from below the video. Just click on anything. You don't have to buy that. Click on anything and then buy it. Or you can go through support our journey on our website. Go to the motorhomeexperiment.com, uh, support our journey, and there's a link to click on for Amazon. Anything you buy through there, it's like 3 to 4% we get. So that's been happening. We really, really appreciate that, guys. But again, I'm really trying not to focus on that stuff. I want to have fun. And if we can make a living yeah, at it in the meantime. But we're always great. horrible, horrible trying to kind of like let you guys know what's available to support it because I know a lot of you ask us how can we support yeah. you. We have people ask and, and we go, Meh. And we always fail. Like right now, what are we failing on? What are we wearing? Oh, yeah. I don't even have one of our new shirts on. Yeah. Mine is in the dirty laundry right now, so right. I cannot wear it. But we have new shirts too, if you want to. Right. Uh, on the motorhomeexperiment.com, uh, if you go to TME Gear, we, we have some mugs, we have some shirts. We are working on getting more designs. Those are designs I did. I am not a designer, as you'll see by we're looking at those things. Designs. We're waiting for designs. Nina, we're waiting for designs. And uh, we're going to have a How Cool Is That t-shirt. We're going to have a, a Proud Member of Adventure Nation t-shirt. And we're going to have some bumper stickers and stuff like that. But again, that to me is, that's yeah. that's secondary. I want to have fun. I want to meet you guys. So. No pressure, Nina. She's an industrial designer, so she's designing some stuff for us. Yeah. 
But anyway, uh, we are mud fun. We're hoping to start full time next August. Looking to update our bad house batteries. What type do you guys use? Looking at lead acid, AGM, or lithium? I mean, again, if money's no object, lithium is, is the way to go. Uh, they're just too overpriced. They're just too overpriced for me. They're they're going to be uh, no maintenance. But the AGM batteries are are you can go those with uh, almost no maintenance as well. For me, the bang for your buck, you can go get a good lead acid battery that you have to check the the water in once every month, once every couple of weeks. Even you can get auto fillers for that kind of stuff. There's no better bang for your buck than that. I just bought a bunch of batteries for our golf carts in Las Vegas from uh, Sam's Club because I wanted to test them to see how they work in our golf cart to try and work uh, use them in our uh, solar setup. And they were 150 bucks at that, where the Trojan T105s are 250 a piece, and that's kind of the the. I don't know if those are lead acid or AGM, but those are the ones that most people are using for their solar setup, the Trojan T105s. They're 250 a piece. And so if you're and going for better. And and we used them in our old golf cart and had issues. So I I wanted to check those in a golf cart environment to see because they get beat up so bad and see how they'll work in our solar. So that's something that we're gonna look into as well. Uh again, I, I direct you guys. I believe in abundance, so I'm not afraid to direct you guys to other people's channels, to other people's stuff. The guys at Technomadia, uh, uh, Chris and Cherie, they did a lot of work on on looking at that stuff. So you can I find information lithium. on lithium on their stuff. And uh, the winds, they also had some good stuff on there as well. So uh, we're probably going to do lead acid, but I say if money's no object. Grab the lithium, well, baby. I would say we're going to do lead acid for now, but maybe at some point transition into lithium. That's kind of like our main goal. Uh, Unless one of you guys own a lithium ion battery company, you want to send us some. Okay, no? chasing abnormal. Where do you find the things you do at each place? Any favorite websites or apps you use for interesting tourist stuff? That's this one here. No, you. Atlas. Like that stuff. Atlas, Atlas Obscura. Cool. That's more of a quirky, quirky things. weird stuff that you find in cities like they have stuff on any city yeah. i mean any, any all over any. the world it's just weird stuff random stuff historic stuff not that your normal touristy stuff so mm -hmm. it's other stuff that's, that's where we found a lot of like those cool hidden gems sometimes some sometimes they're not that cool yeah sometimes you just cool. like go there stay for five seconds and then just move on yeah. so smallest house in the trunk but i like I check a lot of Pinterest, so I love Pinterest for a bunch of stuff, and one of them is like uh, what to do in certain areas, and there's people that have been there or locals that they talk about their own city, and they tell you also hidden gems in that city. And the Google we've been asking these, we've been asking you guys, you guys have been a, a wealth of information. When we went to Nat, uh, Louisville, we didn't expect much of Louisville, and we said, hey, what's to do in Louisville? And we got flooded with stuff and we found some really cool stuff in, in Louisville as you saw we went zip lining underground because of you guys so that was cool so that was that was awesome by the way we've got like 275 people on right now awesome. you guys are amazing thank you I know you guys got more important things to do instead of partying out there we're gonna do one of these really early in the morning the next time I think at like 10 a.m. in January because we have people in New Zealand and Australia and Europe that watch us that right now it's like four in the morning there. So the next one is going to be super early. I don't know if you guys will hang out or not. But anyways. Anyways. Continue. Kyle Atlas Taylor. Obscura. Sorry, one more. Atlas Obscura. Pinterest. Pinterest. And Field Trip is an app. It's a little bit, eh. I've been using it, but eh. What oh, else? Old trails. If we're going to go hiking, I go to old trails and check the trails around us to see if there is anything worth it. And there is pictures and there is uh, ratings and all that stuff. So that's always a great uh, TripAdvisor for the touristy stuff. TripAdvisor for touristy stuff and Thrillist. Thrillist.com is another one. Okay. Kylan Taylor, what's your advice on starting up a channel like yours? Uh, don't, don't do it do for it. the money. Yeah. If you, you guys think Good you're going to do it for fun. the money, Good for fun. not in this space. If you're funny and you have kids and you guys can do something else other than the RV travel niche, I would say do that. We've even talked about it. We've talked about what can we do. And Lori won't let me get naked on camera. So we're having an issue with that. That's not true. What? We haven't talked about that at all. But I don't think we make any money doing that either. 
But you starting up a channel. Serious, serious traction? No, I wasn't saying serious. It, it's really it's really tough to get traction. Uh, we just really built it slowly but surely. Uh, they'll you, know, you go to the experts and they'll tell you go to the other channels and make nice comments and hopefully people will notice you and you know that's one way to do it. But we have some people that come on and go. Hi, we love your channel. It's so cool. We've got a new channel. Subscribe. And it's like, you're not adding any value to what we're doing. So why would why would we go subscribe or help out? Or why would anybody on our channel go subscribe and help out? So I would say no matter what you do, make the best, absolute best content that you're capable of making. Go make some comments on other, other people's channels. Follow them and stuff like that. Don't ask them to subscribe to your channel. Go and and provide value for them, provide value for, for the, the people on their people channel, for the people watching them, provide value for the people watching you, and keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best because the I don't think there's any way to build a YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, there is a way to build YouTube and a lot of YouTubers do it. It's called advertisement, but if you have the dollars to do it, right. if you're just doing it basically organically, just grow because people find you and like you, that that's how we have done it and that's what we're growing slowly to. It's like, I mean, that's amazing because yeah. we built a community that we have something in common. We just didn't go and just target you. It's like you found us somehow. So that's also awesome, but no, don't do it for the money. A lot of people do it because they think within six months they're going to be able to go and just quit their job. And be full time. And it's not true. It doesn't happen like that. I mean, we've done it for what? Like year and a half, year or something like that. And we're still not, it's not like we're, well, we don't have a job, I guess, but uh, we have businesses, but it's not like we're going to sell the business and then just go full time YouTubing. We are not doing that. Right. Think think about the number, the number that we told you earlier, yeah. $430. So take 400 bucks. Let's say we make the channel five times bigger and we get to 2000 bucks a month. I mean, it's okay, but that's, that's not our lifestyle because we like to, we like to go and we like to do stuff and we like to have fun. We are not, you know, everyone, um, you know, there's different ways to do this. You can do things cheap and you can, you know, live really cheap in an RV. That's not our idea of fun. That's not our our, do, our choice of lifestyle. You can do that cheap as you want. You can do that more expensive as you want. I think we are in the middle. I mean, we don't go from high in part to high in part. With yeah, we don't have a luxury, pre Yeah, with a luxury coach. But also, we're not just like, just go with Doing our minimum. best to save every last yeah, dollar. Yeah, so we're right there in the middle so and that got a little bit off topic yeah but because it's about the channel and i will say just do it because you like it do it because you love it and, and you think you can entertain you're people. gonna find people with things in common and that i think you guys is like we have things in common and that's why you guys watch us it's like and that's the coolest thing ever to it's, find people that you have things in common with we've grown really slowly and we've grown such an amazing community and I don't want to talk about it because I'm a little wussy boy and I'll start to cry yeah, but yeah. we've built an amazing community and the people that we've met we will be friends for life yeah. and I and it has, been, it has been awesome I yeah I, I need tissues tradition hippie hey tradition is like I angel what's happening April April sorry Jeez. I said angel sorry. I remember the video when you I were taking an shots to get on the boat to go to Hawaii that was a long time ago tradition yeah. There's a few names that if you come in in a regular basis, we just know you. You, we know you. Yeah. Well, and we we know April because we've talked to her before, and she's amazing. Yeah. And April, we're waiting for you out on the on the road. Where are you? Come on. Nile, hey folks, what is your normal coach maintenance, oil lube, etc. Like, so mm -hmm. Kevin and Laura, they do something that is very cool that probably we should do. <laughs> They have actually lists. Uh, they have a uh, one day maintenance list where they do maintenance every week, every month, or every few months. And they go through the list and they go through the items and just give maintenance to different stuff. But and I'm don't. more a oh my god, I haven't changed the oil in a few thousand miles. I should do that. Yes, yeah, Ma sir. Maintenance for me, people do overkill, and I'm going to try and keep it short. I will. I promise I'll keep it short. But the argument I always have with everyone is. They say oil changes are are cheap insurance for me. It's a ridiculous amount waste of time and money to do an oil change every three thousand miles. We do it every ten thousand, which means I've done three oil changes in the entire time we've been out. Uh, I haven't even done a generator oil change yet or maintenance on that. Just um, the the filter, the air filter, because we run it so little. 
Uh, so I'm going to plan on doing that every year. I do check the oil on a regular basis. Our coach, again, touch base, does not go through oil. I have no idea how that's even possible, but it doesn't go through oil. The generator doesn't go through oil. We are very, very lucky. Again, touch wood. Uh, maintenance has been so minimal. It's been absolutely incredible. Are you done with oil? I'm done with all that stuff. Just just maintenance as a whole. You know, we check the tires on a regular basis. Uh, we 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 down on a regular basis. You know, we carry a screw gun in the yeah. in the RV I and mean, we tighten we things up. We check basic stuff like so we're safe on the road. Like the tires on that yeah. on a very regular basis. The dolly and all that stuff. The lights on the dolly and the lights are on. But there is some stuff that we do it once it's kind of like somewhat uh, rattling and falling apart by the cabinets. It's like, okay, it's time to go and just kind of like screw everything on. But uh, I've had a tire minder, like, uh, tire minder, tire system so the whole time sitting in the coach. I haven't installed it yet. I just check the tires constantly so I don't feel like it's really necessity. Yeah. She wants me to install it. And it will get installed soon and I will do a how to on all sure, of it. Sure, sure, sure. Happy New Year from Sean and Leon. Happy New Year. Sean and Leon from Nashville using the video. Your pineapple friends in Nashville is like, oh, the whole pineapple thing. <laughs> That's awesome. I know if you guys know, Leon loves pineapple just because she likes the pineapple. And actually, this season, the pineapples are very in. And so it's like you will see pineapples in t shirts and earrings and everywhere. We didn't know until not too long ago that pineapple also means swinger. You might be a swinger. So <laughs> it's like. I still think Liam might be giving me some hints. <laughs> but it's also like a, a like a Pacific uh, Rim, like welcome, greeting, hello. Yeah, it's like in Hawaii, it's like yeah. an aloha, welcome thing. Yeah. And yes, <laughs> Craig Morrison, do you serve as a coach at all or do you have someone else do it? Nobody touches my coach. Uh, no, we... <laughs> We, we do it all ourselves. I do it all myself. The oil changes, all that. If it was major, like, I don't know if, if I, you know, smoked a tie rod or something on it while we were off-roading. I don't know. I might have somebody do that. But for the most part, I, I don't see any reason to have someone else do it. I'm a pretty good mechanic, so I, I do all that stuff ourselves. Kevin and I, we replaced a um, uh, um, a brace for one of the, the sway bars. We replaced that. We replaced shocks on Kevin's coach when we were in New Brunswick. Uh, we're, you know, pretty good mechanics, so I, I try to do it all myself. All the, all the less major stuff. Our rule of thumb is like we have a deductible in our insurance of a hundred bucks. So if it costs less than a hundred bucks, it's like Paul will do it. If it costs way more than that, then we will call the warranty or insurance or something like that. Um, so far, that hasn't been necessary. Yes. Uh, Rick Beans, hi guys from Roseville, California. You guys made me laugh so hard with your video of the hot springs. If you have not seen that video, please watch it. <coughs> Quite the experience right here. I, 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 I read all the comments, by the way, guys. We read all the comments. I, I just would rather be spending my time editing and getting new video out than trying to answer. And I try to catch up every now and then. But I read all the comments on that video and I was dying myself. I was in tears. In all seriousness, though, it was a really neat experience. I would, I'm still a little weirded out by it. I would say, like, Feel if, a you little never, violated. if you have never done it, do it. But if you have already, like, we have done it, I don't know if I will do it again. So that's I, I, know, I don't need to do it any any in the near future. <laughs> anything I like, no. Okay, already gone RV. We watch you from the move out of your house, and you we will enjoy watching from the start. Lorena has come a long way since then. You can tell she really enjoys it. Yes, it's like I think I'm more right now. I'm in front of a camera. I don't have that much fun issue now. So and she's yeah. doing all the talking. No, I'm doing all the questioning right here. Because she won't let me handle it anymore. She says yeah. I suck at it. You remember last time? Peace, dope. Happy holidays, Ozzy. Hey, peace, dope. Another one that's a regular viewer. Ozzy, oh. they said happy holidays. You should come down. No. <laughs> Down under video. Hi from Melbourne, Australia. We Down under. Place. What time That's is awesome. it there? Oh my goodness! Oh, That's no. so early in the morning or late at night, depending on how you look at it. Thank you so much. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, Donna, don't even get it started. We're gonna need the camera to swing for your mom because it's like here's a question, Paul. Why don't you get your mom to try a Beyond Meat burger? <laughs> no, thank you. 
<laughs> See, she won't even try it. No. Nope. It it looks like a hamburger. It tastes like a hamburger. It's a hundred percent plant based and is good for you, but no. 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 Let's no, move you. on. Let's move on. The whole you can teach an old dog new tricks. Not that old no, dog. No, you can't. No. Okay, Carlos. Hi, guys. Carlos, brain tumor survivor guy. Love you guys. Wow. Carlos, you're amazing, dude. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Byron, where is the kitty? He's upstairs. <laughs> He's right above us, actually, in the room above Literally us. Literally right above yeah. us. Uh, Rowdy, so plan on going to Alaska next summer. Is Alan, what's right? happening? How long? Rowdy one. So it's that's like Alan. that's Alan. Yeah. So Alan, yes, for how long we're not sure. I think like for a month probably over there, something like that. That would be planning a long time in advance. This is what we know about Alaska. We're going. That's it. Yeah. GW199. How long are you going to be in Mexico? Like right now or when we travel to Baja. Baja? Right now, I'm going to be here for the next two to three days with my mom. Then I'm going to go back over. Lori's staying here for an extra few days. And then her and her sisters are coming over. And then we're all going to do a little trip in the RV. And my son's coming in from Hawaii. And uh, we're going to all hang out for a little bit. And then we're heading out. When we go down into Mexico with the coach, Kevin and I talked about 10 days down. 10 days in Cabo San Lucas, 10 days back out. So a month total. Mm -hmm. That's preliminary. That's all the planning we've got. We are much fun. Last couple of days in New Hampshire have been in single digits, LOL. Well, we heard right now from Mary and from Melissa that his sister, that there is a blizzard coming over there. Hometown yeah. London, blizzard, yeah. snow. Sorry. Yeah. So it's cold here, but no snow. So when, Carlos, when you guys coming back to New Jersey? It's going to be a while, brother. Gonna it's going to be a while. while. It's going to be a, over a year, so a year and a half, maybe even two years. Yeah. It's like, Joe Brennan, what's your plans for the New Year's? Joe, what's happening, dude? <sighs> Not too many. We have many plans, and everybody, people are afraid of forests because of the news and all that. And that was a long time ago, by the way. But right now, it's just growing so much, this city, and so many new businesses, and so many new shows, so many new everything. There's so many people here that probably a few years ago, we could book last minute, go into a restaurant or somewhere, and go and have New Year's Day. New Year's Eve there and this year like we tried to book a week in advance and everything is sold out like everything sold out here in town so basically we're gonna do pozole right here in the house and we're gonna spend New Year's at kind of like very laid back calm New Year's here in the house mm -hmm. that is the plan um happy new year from a lot of people hi Paul Lorena the Adventure Nation Friends Club is in the house hi John John and Elizabeth John, first off, we gotta we gotta say hi to, to John and Elizabeth. John reached out to us and asked if he could start a group on Facebook for us, the Adventure Nations Friend Club. We have no idea what we're doing with it yet, but we said absolutely we would love that. And John has been running that for us and adminning it for us. And that's amazing. Thank you so much. And again, that's part of what we talked about. We've built such a great community. John is a part of that. And again, we just really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And hopefully someday down the road, we'll figure out what we're going to do exactly with that as far as a private event well, or yeah, special about, training. You I guys like to become friends as well. So that's awesome. John has created, like, he puts a lot of work and effort and has created that community. So that's awesome. Thank yeah, you, yeah, it gives you guys something to talk about back and forth as well. And Even if it's bad. Yeah, okay. talk, talk about Lori if you want. Hey. It's like, Gary, will you tell with a smaller coach? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. I, I really didn't want to tow car at first. I was like, oh, we'll rent a car when we're somewhere, use the bicycles. I'm glad we, we towed a, a car. It gives you so many more options as far as getting close mm -hmm. to certain places and then being able to go in. So we found that most of the better campgrounds are going to be further away from the city. Uh, you get into the inner city campgrounds, you get what you get, as we found out there in Louisville. Uh, but the better campgrounds are going to be outside of the city. So you can stay in a nicer campground, take a car into the city. We will mm -hmm. probably always tow something. Uh, I don't think that we would like to bring our house because our coach is our house everywhere we go. Yeah. So I think it's always nice to go and park your coach somewhere and then just go and tourist around, tour around with your car. It's just so much 
easier to park it and find spots, get into spots. So I think we will always tell. Uh, Len, Paul, love your drone shots. Drone shots. Are you still going to buy a new one? I, I want a different drone. And thank you, by the way, because I am always frustrated by my drone, drone shots. I always figure something's missing, <laughs> that they're not good enough, that I need to do something better. So I'm working on different techniques and trying to learn more about that stuff. Uh, I don't pull the drone out as much as I would like because it is big and bulky and it's phenomenal in the wind, as you saw when I was flying it off of Sean's boat. Uh, it, it works great in, in windy situations, but because it's bigger, I don't whip it out as much. <laughs> that seems like, that just you doesn't just sound good. You don't fly it as often. What, what you have to Usually if something's way. bigger, you would want to whip it out more. My drone isn't that way. But anyways, I, I want to get a Mavic Pro, a DJI Mavic Pro. But I reached out to the folks at Unique and I said, hey, I'm going to buy a DJI Mavic Pro. Can you tell me what you're coming out with this year at uh, CES? CES is the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and that's where all these electronic companies uh, introduce new products. So they said they are coming out with four new products, so I'm hoping it's a smaller, more compact drone. And one way or another, I will get a new drone sometime this year so that I will use it more. Because I, I love that as well. I love the, the cinematography that you can get. Uh, recently, when, when my mom saw one of the shots, she's like, how did you get that? And we said, well, we rented a helicopter. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the shots that you can get with that are, are, are just fun. It's just really fun. So one way or another, I will either get another drone or just use my drone I have now more, if that makes any sense. I know. No. But Ted says, it's like, I wonder if Paul will notice we are ignoring him. Ted, is that Ted Denman? Yeah, I think so. Ted Denman, the guy who sent us a bug sponge to hint on the window. Did you see my oh, window in that I last video? That. It was nasty. But it was, it worked awesome. It was nasty bugs, that window. But Ted sent us a bug sponge, you guys, so I'm going to try and use it more, get our window to be a little bit more clean. That was hilarious, by the way, dude. I just about spit up our morning coffee when we were opening that. It was awesome. It was funny. And that time <clears> we got, oh, my God, it's like we got this uh, little part for the car that goes in the windshield wiper on the back. Yeah, how you saw how that, you I guys don't know. Notice that? It's Somebody, I can't remember the name. Okay, we are much fun as Kevin, the same thing about the batteries, which one will he go with? So I don't know Yeah, Kevin, can you answer that in there? Which batteries are you going with, dude? Chasing Abnormal. Do the Millers have a YouTube channel? They do have a YouTube channel. Um, just search veganrv.com or vegan, yeah, vegan RV uh, on YouTube and it should pop up. They only have a couple of videos right now because Kevin is too lazy to make videos. <laughs> Byron, is the vegan diet helping a lot? We're we're not vegan, so that that's what's that's what's weird is that. Oh, um, okay. So difference between vegan and vegetarian, quick. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about oh, okay, that, never mind. But, but difference since he mentioned it. Vegan, no animal product whatsoever. No dairy, no eggs, no meat, no leather, wearing leather, no honey, no, no nothing. Vegetarian, no meat, no fish. Some people think like vegetarian means fish, but no fish. But dairy and eggs are okay. The way we consider ourselves are vegetarian because if we go out, we will eat maybe some dairy, some cheese or something like that on a pizza. But in the RV, we have become 100% vegan. Right, so no dairy products, no eggs, no nothing, nothing in the RV. And we're so happy about it. I mean, we really are happy. We don't feel we're missing anything. I mean, because mm -hmm. there's so many great vegan products out there that really replace the regular products that are even is like maybe not healthier, maybe a few of them healthier, other, one, other ones maybe just replace them. Yeah, and I think that's a misnomer as well. It's like, right. oh, because you're vegan, it's, it's healthier, and it's not necessarily healthier. It's, there's a lot of processed foods in the, in the vegan thing, but it's about, again, you know, the whole be kind to animals thing and uh, just e eating stuff that's unnecessary. So I don't know. I, I, for me, it was a health choice because I wanted to get rid of the meat. I felt red meat especially, and some of the processed meats that we had were just super unhealthy. And for me, I noticed it in the initial two to three week process, my energy levels skyrocketed, guys. I mean, I literally, my energy went through the roof. I noticed that uh, 
I, I was just wasn't as winded and I dropped weight. I dropped 20 to 25 pounds in the first two to three weeks, which drives Lori crazy mm -hmm. because it was literally without changing exercise habits or anything. Boom. Just yeah, like that. It was months for me. It was literally a year to drop like that many pounds, but it's different. But it's been aw awesome. And Kevin and Laura have opened up our eyes to many options that we have. And I just think that if people know that there's more options and it's not all like my, my mom made a comment in Canada that I drive her nuts. She calls it, we eat plants and dirt. And it's like, well, no, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, we eat a lot of plate, plants. Everything we eat is plant-based. But for me, plant-based means it's, for me, it's, I feel it's safe. Uh, I just, I, I'm in a safe space where I will try anything now. Where before, if Lori said, hey, you got to try this menudo, I'd be like, are you crazy? That stuff is disgusting. But now it's like, hey, try this eggplant. Try this tofu whatever. try this whatever right. if it's plant-based i'll eat it now okay um by the way Jen but we'll still just by the oh, way okay. we will still hang out with you guys you guys have a hamburger you guys have sausage on your pizza whatever don't think that because we're vegetarian and we eat vegetarian we can't hang out and still have fun and and grill or do whatever you guys do whatever you want to do we'll do whatever we want we'll figure it out yeah, and we'll we can all still be friends yeah yeah uh, well, June is in the house from London. June Thompson, what's happening? Dean, how are you guys doing? And Trish is in the house, too, from Albuquerque, that they miss Kevin. Trish, what's happening? Yeah, so that's awesome. It's awesome to see people that we have hang out with because we can put the face to the actual. Oh, I drew a blank on Trish's husband's name. Was it Steve? I think it was Steve. Okay. Steve? Trish? You have to let us in on Trish. that one. We feel so bad about yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, we are much fun. We're about to break 5,000 subscribers. We're a tiny channel. LOL. Nice. All right. We're all tiny. We're all in the same place. Don't worry about it. We'll, right. You'll get there. So wait, what's the name of the channel? We are mud fun. We are mud fun. So here's here's the deal with that, guys. We can say, hey, guys, go check out We Are Mud Fun. We can't make people subscribe. We can't make people like you. So hopefully, if you got 5K already, you're doing pretty good. You'll mm -hmm. see that start to accelerate and get better and better and better and better. So just keep creating the best content you can and and best of luck to you guys that's awesome uh sort of little everyone watching send 20 dollars per person to the more home experiment that's fine that's a great idea like uh that's a resource alaska is amazing being there it is very large and takes a lot of time to run around favorites will be valdez and homer cool so now we need to keep that in mind cool are you keeping notes too on top of all this? uh no i think kevin is doing that Kevin's taking notes on where to go in Alaska. Yeah, oh boy, we're doomed. Um, the watch you can wait to see what 2018 brings. That's awesome. Do you think you'll ever go back to the Wright Patterson Air Force Museum? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we just barely scratched the surface. It was so we went big. through it so fast. Yeah. Uh, somebody made a comment one time. It's like, hey, if you guys don't spend any time somewhere, why why should we? Here's the deal. We travel pretty fast, and a lot of this stuff is unplanned. So we don't have a one week vacation where we say, oh, for this week, we're going to do this and this and this and this, and we're going to set all this time up. We like going driving by an, inter an interstate sign that says some go somewhere and we go off and do it. And then we go, oh, we're going to spend four or five hours here. And we realize that we should have spent four or five days there. It, it's what we try to do is give you enough information about an area so that you can make an informed decision that when you go, oh, yeah. you're able to spend the amount of time necessary yeah. in a place instead of not having enough time, blowing your vacation and, you know, and having to go back again. So that's why we don't spend much time. It's not because we don't think that you guys should spend time there. It's like a lot of this stuff is unplanned and yeah. Uh, Rhonda, hi, sorry I'm late. I was watching your video. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, Rhonda. Hello. Um, Barry, hi, hello from Muskoka, Ontario. We were spending two months in the southern USA the winter, February and March. Enjoy your videos. Thanks for the reviews of destinations. Muskoka, we love Muskoka. I, I spent a lot of time there as a yeah. kid. Uh, I had relatives in, uh, that lived on the Indian River there in Port Carling. Love, love the Muskoka mm -hmm. area and the lakes. And it Lori and beautiful. Kevin and Laura did too. It was beautiful, yeah. Uh, Marvin, Rolling USA, I guess that's a question for you, for me, sorry. It's like, do you day trade? No, I don't day trade. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a, a thing about my trading. It's like, I do my trading not really for living expenses. I do it for our, basically, growing our savings for retirement. 
So basically, we make the money in the business. Paul makes the money in business. I trade for retirement. That's how I grow it for retirement. Let's say it that way. I don't day trade because it's very hard to have a reliable internet connection every single day. So you have to be able to get in, get out. So it's a fast paced thing. I'd rather do something more slower paced. So I don't do that. So just to cover that one. So basically swing, she does more swing trading. Swing trading. There's two weeks, a month. Yeah, there's three types of trading. Day trading, daily, swing trading, weekly, maybe a month. And there is the investing type, the long-term type. That is basically what Warren Buffett does. That they do it for years, basically. Right. I do the one in between, basically. You do not want to day trade when your internet connection is no. on a cell phone. Even <laughs> that's a bad even deal. There. Swing trading, I have slowed down so much. Like I'm not making uh, as much as I used to because we'll be in Canada in a remote area, and I cannot see my trades. So at that point, is like I needed to go into more safer places and slow down my trading. So that's the I guess the trade off with it when yeah. you're traveling. Yeah. Um, and yeah, day trading, when you have a great is. connection, day trading is harrowing. I've been there, done that, and it's, yeah, it's tough. Yes, it's tough. Jet gl uh, gliding, gliding is like, what are your hidden gems for Vegas, must-see places, restaurants, etc.? Ronald's Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so Ronald's Donuts has vegan donuts there. Kevin turned us on to that. The place is amazing. Um, again, most of the stuff that we found the last time we were there, was vegan food but i will tell you some of the best mexican food we ever had in the united states a place called poncho's vegan tacos little tiny place at trop and pecos Lori will tell you best authentic mexican food oh my god so regular good. or vegan and it's all vegan meats amazing absolutely good. incredible uh, there was a place there called veggie house that was an asian place awesome veggie nation uh, veggie nation is great as far as uh, places to see in and around there, you'll want to go out and do some hiking at Red Rock. You'll want to go to the Valley of Fire there. That's probably five minutes north of Las Vegas, though. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing, pretty amazing. You're you're a couple um, of hours from Death Valley. I recommend going see that. And Lake Mead. I Lake love. It's also thirty minutes from there. I love Lake Mead and, and the Hoover Dam. I, Hoover I love. Dam. If you've never been to the Hoover Dam, do it at least one time and do the tour in the dam. Very mm -hmm. cool stuff. Neat history, way it was built, and all that. Uh, I would say the Pioneer Saloon is like an old yeah. west saloon and it's like from the late 1800s, early yeah. 1900s and it looks like that. Uh, Nelson is very close to Vegas too, going towards Laughlin and it's like a ghost town. Uh, they do mine tours too. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, there, there's so many hidden gems in and around Vegas. If, if you pop over, if you're going to go there, pop over on Facebook and, and shoot me a quick message to remind me and just ask and let me know what exactly you were looking for. Are you looking for food? Are you looking for hiking? Are you looking for uh, biking? And, uh, okay, and we'll give you some info. Actually, I love the same line. Shayla says, are you ever at your business in Las Vegas? I was wondering because we are going to, we're going there to visit my husband's sister. So yes, we go to the business to visit the business. Actually, we're coming from there. Yeah, uh, we went there before coming into El Paso for our Christmas dinners with the guys, and uh, we have a good time when we're over there. We were extremely busy; like we know there's some people over there that watches yeah. us, and we literally didn't have any time whatsoever to meet anybody. I mean, we were so busy on the entire time. There. Yeah, I, I felt bad because we we couldn't uh, meet any viewers there, yes. but we do go. And so that you guys are on here, uh, just a spoiler alert, our videos from uh, where we just were are going to continue through Albuquerque and into Las <laughs> Vegas, where we just do a little bit in Las Vegas before coming down here into El Paso. But yeah, we, we do go uh, check in on the business uh, every now and then. We've got some amazing staff working for us. And so, yeah, just go ahead and sneeze and ruin our broadcast. I'm just kidding. Um, we've got some amazing staff there. Our, our detail manager, Anna, has been with us for going on five years now. It does a great job. Uh, Cliff is another long-term employee that's been with us now over a year. And I know Cliff watches. I don't know if he's on tonight, but I know Cliff watches. Uh, and, and he's been amazing. He supports Anna whenever he can. Uh, we have another guy, Miguel, who's now been with us a while. And all of our staff, uh, Jenny, Linda, uh, who else? We've got we've got some new guys. Miguel, I said him. Jenny, Linda, and uh, new guy. 
Lunmar is a new guy, Lundmar? and then Junmar, and then uh, the other young lady that worked for us. Jasmine. Jasmine. So, yeah, we've got some great staff there working for us, and we really appreciate them. And we stop in and see them every now and then, but they'd rather I'm not there because I slow them down. Okay, Shayla, where is a good place there to boondock or RV park in Las Vegas? Depending what you're looking for, for RV park in Las Vegas, we highly recommend Oasis. Oasis. You cannot go wrong with that one. It's very resorty style with the pools, the hot tubs, and everything else. You guys are leaving? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're take they're taking off with my mom. Here, wait. They're taking they're leaving with my mom. They're bye they're bye. taking her. <laughs> bye. bye. See you guys. Mom. Are you guys going to get food? Yeah. Oh, amazing. They're going to get food. So, so that's a campground in Las Vegas. Now, Oasis, yes. Bunta. Have you got any pesos? Yeah. Do you need pesos? Sure. <laughs> Asking for money. Yeah. Okay, so I see something. Okay, just. Sorry, gang. Oh, we're we're sorry. On being we're just like interrupted. we're being interrupted. Sorry. How much does she need? Two fifty enough? I don't know. <laughs> More, more than that. <laughs> I just gave her a bunch of pesos. My, my I don't know. My sister is also oh, like, yeah. I don't know how much money I just gave her. I just gave her a bunch of pesos. $75? Is that what I gave her? Okay, yeah. I gave her $75. No. Holy smokes. Hey, give me that money back. All right. Anyways, sorry for the interruption. So Oasis and boondocking. boondocking. Like there is a few government wash. Government wash in Lake Mead is not that far from Las Vegas. I mean, what thirty minutes from Las Vegas? Yeah. About that, and it's free camping right next to the lake. That's one. One of my hidden gems close to Las Vegas, and you have to do this winter time, spring when it's not windy, springtime, fall time. Not when it's very hot though. There is a road close well i guess no that's not close to las vegas like but around loughlin between loughlin and las vegas telephone oh, telephone, telephone cove, cove. Telephone, cove telephone, telephone cove cove. yeah that one it's pretty spectacular boondocking right next to the water like literally you can put your rv a foot from the water you're on the colorado river on the colorado colorado river but you have to take a dirt road to get there it's about like four or five miles in yes. so it's not for the week of Hard. If you've got one of your pretty coaches, you're gonna get all dirty. But there's, <laughs> but there is like cell phone signal too. So oh, great, great cell phone. You can work from there. You can be connected from there. Just bring supplies because you don't want to be going in and out from there all the time. Mm -hmm. So I will say that. Uh, Mr. Mark, where are you? I came in late. We are in Juarez, Mexico, Mr. Mark. We're across the border from El Paso, Texas. We were. Crossing the border literally at 5.30 mountain time to get mm -hmm. started at a 6 p.m. mountain time. We didn't think we were going to make it. We got here about 10 minutes early. So, yeah. Okay, Charles, where, when are you going to do a vegan cooking show? <laughs> That's Kevin and Laura's job. Miller, where's your vegan cooking show? Laura, Kevin's wife, Laura, even though she doesn't talk too much, that girl can cook. Mm -hmm. And she showed Lori a couple different things. We do this, the tofu scramble now in the morning, and it's amazing. She definitely should do a cooking show, and I think so too. especially with vegan stuff, because you guys will see that there's a whole different side of, of that type of food that, that, that you don't even know about. It's, it's awesome. Okay, where the windshield goes. Hey guys, looking forward to your Alaska trip videos. Will help us plan our trip for 2020. Wow. Woo woo. Long time. Nice. Now. Um, let me see. This thing jumps, so I'm not sure where I am. Oh yeah, see. Laura? It's the first oh, it's time. Easy. It's the first it's time. It's easy. It's the first time. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. See. See now you're gonna get grumpy because it's gonna <laughs> it's jumping around. It's not easy. The questions come by fast okay, and furious. Gary, how long should we stay in the S and P, Lorena? S and P. S and P. Gary. Gary, you're gonna have to help us out here. S and P. Standard and Poor's. Oh, Standard and Poor. I bet you it's a. Uh, it's an S and P. It's a. It's oh. a trading question. We're look. We're thinking it's travel and your. Yeah. Like, I'm looking the end. Like what he means. I'm thinking of our being. Standard and poor. Sorry, yeah, Gary. Sorry. We were thinking travel. We were trying to think of, like the sun and pool or. Well, my yeah. answer to that is you don't know. You shouldn't be there. Yeah. So, it, it's. 
it, it's one of those things where where you can never again never guess the bottom never try to guess the top you need to educate 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 and learn to trade if, if you mm -hmm. can't trade stay out of the market and if you're just gonna hand your money over to somebody else 401k uh, stay out of the market it, it's just read a book called 401 chaos by Dan Tanner Andy Tanner. Andy, Andy Tanner yeah. Uh, 401 chaos. Uh, you can normally do them for free. I think it's a yeah, there. it's online, but, but it has but, a lot of great information. Guys, yeah. never let other people just handle yeah. your money blindly. It's not a it's not a good thing. Okay, sneaker girl of the something like that. How many hours per week do you work each week? Um, oh god, that's a tough thing. Well, totally different kind of work. Like if it's work on always. Um, on the business in Vegas, I will say I don't work that much. I work probably four hours every two weeks. Every two weeks, mm -hmm. because I don't do that much. I don't control operations or anything like that. I just do invoicing and payroll and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to trading, is like it's more like a maintenance thing, so that varies. When it comes to editing, for you, it's like. Uh, a lot of hours. It, lots, it's, lots of hours. Again, I, I try not to be whiny, but if we are not doing stuff, like if we're not on our bikes or at an attraction, I am behind my computer editing, like literally, correct, like all the mm -hmm. time. Yep. If or or I'm asleep. So as soon as as soon as we come back from a bike trip or something like that, we'll drive somewhere. Sometimes I'm pulling over in rest areas because I'm like, okay, I need to get a video out. So. I, I try to edit a little bit while we're in a rest area and then it's like, okay, no, we need to get down the road a little bit so that we can grab some dinner and stay overnight. So we will drive a little bit more. Uh, I would love if Lori drove more so that I could edit while we were driving, but. He couldn't trust me driving anyway. I mean, who are we kidding? I, I would have a hard time probably See? just working. See? Yeah, See? No, I, it's not that I don't trust you. I, I trust her. That's, uh, what, just, that's what he says. It's not like I don't trust you, but he will not really let me drive anyway. I don't want to drive anyway. I like scenery. But I will say, for the again, for the amount of work that goes into the channel, totally not worth it. But for what we get out of it as far as the interactions with you guys, uh, the meeting of people, and just the fun that I'm having doing it, it it's... It's invaluable. There was, there was a question about that. It's like, did you start the channel for the money? Oh, no. Not at all. No. That Not was, I didn't even know why I started it. I think it was more like to document for us. I, I saw the wins. That's how we got into the RV thing. I saw the wins and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. I, you know, somebody might find me funny other than Lori. Lori thinks I'm funny, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time not. But so I thought, well, maybe you know, maybe it'll be entertaining enough. I've always wanted to to do stand up and things like that. So I thought, well, maybe I can entertain some people while we document how this whole thing goes. Because I hadn't seen anybody document what it took to leave their house to go into the RV. So I thought that might be kind of cool. And I did a really shitty job at it. But we're improving. I mean, again, when you start your channel, because I know there are some of you guys out there with the channels, you just improve little by little. So that's how we did it. We sucked at the beginning, and then we improved little by little. It, it's gotten better, I hope. I, I think it's gotten better. Somebody made a comment in one of the videos the other day that it's gotten boring. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. Maybe maybe we could, um, I don't know. Paint your face white, wrote red nose. And yeah, something like that, clown mask, and maybe, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We're going to try and keep it interesting this year by doing some more how-to stuff, but I also want to continue with the travel stuff because I enjoy that. And again, I know there's a lot of, we, we have an older crowd in our community, and, and I'm okay with that, and I know a lot of you guys can't travel, so I love when I hear, I can't travel, I'll probably never ever see it, I'm glad I got to come along for the ride. That touches my heart. I, I love that, and it makes me want to I tell Lori that, that makes me want to do it more. Whenever I hear those comments, like I will never get to see that unless I got to see it with you guys, man, that that's huge. That's worth more than the money. It really is. And I know that's or probably you just cliche. Like make but you do it. Just kind of like you saw us and because you saw our travels, now you're thinking I'm doing it yourself. Right. You inspire you. And like the same way somebody inspire us, we feel like we need to inspire somebody else because we think it's such a cool thing to do. That's so narcissistic. 
<laughs> it is super narcissistic, but at the same time, it's like I want you to live your life the way you want it. Right. Like, not necessarily right. in an RV, but maybe just traveling alone. Right. And if that's what you like, it's like so be it and just make it happen. Right. It sounded it is, narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Videotaping yourself constantly and talking into a camera is pretty narcissistic. But if you look at it from the point where, like, if we had a whole crew of people that were shooting video for us, and then it would be called a TV show. But when you shoot it yourself, it's narcissistic. It's yeah. kind, of, kind of strange. But okay, Red Jaguar 100. Hi, guys. I've been with you from the beginning. Red Jag. You're growing leaps and bounds. Do you still own your business? And how do you handle it from the road? Again, we addressed that a little bit earlier, but Red Jaguar, yes, been around. They've been around since the beginning, and, and we appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Uh, we do still have the business. We, we have a manager there that runs it for us. Uh, we have a great crew. We've brought on some new people over the last year that have been awesome. And they they are amazing, and and they don't require me to be there very very much. Uh, I I have some guilt about that, but I also know that when I show up there, they're doing a great job. I slow them down because then I'm talking to everybody all the time. So I know they would prefer that I'm. I I know they would like me to be there, but they prefer me not to be there. It's a whole love hate thing with me being there. But they don't need. They really don't need me there very very much except for major things yeah. and for he, major he things i'll fly back. in yeah he will usually will go back every three four months and just do a lot of more maintenance stuff yeah i'm the golf cart mechanic <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> jani the, the janitor, the janitor. You're the CEO and the janitor yeah the sometimes yeah yeah it is basically yeah uh tasha oh thank you kevin he just kind of told me that i skipped like an hour of comments um uh, see Lori, it's not yeah. so easy no, I know. I acknowledge that when you hit that button, it just scrolls to the bottom. But at the same time, it's like I'm not just like stop talking to you guys and be here for five minutes. It's like, see, that's how she catches up. She just skips a whole bunch. <laughs> it's like, let's move on. Tasha, <laughs> will you be traveling back to New Brunswick, Canada? I sure hope so. At yes, some point, it was amazing. Not, not, not anytime soon, unfortunately. It, it was amazing. I gotta stop playing with it. Uh, Velcro. Uh, I need a fidget spinner. Okay. But we won't go back. One. We won't go back anytime soon. But New Brunswick was was incredible. It was, it was absolutely pretty incredible. amazing. It's like James Cromwell. What city? What city has the roughest highway roads in the country? I mean Indianapolis, and it has to be there. No, <clears throat> actually no. not. Um, I would say we, there's two roads that literally the, my entire Shook our teeth closet out. came down. And in one of them, Ozzy came from underneath the slide where he usually hides, and he was crying like crazy. Yep. He's like, "What? The, what is happening?" <clears throat> uh, one was in Maine. That was US one in Maine. Now, not in a city particularly. It was uh, between. The it was border, between Acadia okay. National Park and um, and crossing the border into New Brunswick. So yeah, it was it was nuts. And then recently, just Fruit sixty six in Oklahoma City and stuff, and Amarillo. Wow, there's some areas that were rough, but a lot of it was brick too. So it was like they revived the old brick uh, road. It was Route 66, so it's and old. Route 66 it's old, old, but uh, I don't remember the roads in Indy being bad. Yeah, they were bad, but I don't remember too. I don't think. Yeah, they were bad, but I don't think they were that bad. There, there has been other states that were there. We need to do a top state. ten worst roads. I don't know. Or something. Some small town Arizona <clears throat> has pretty bad roads, and some small town New Mexico. So. Uh, we are mud fan. Did you have a Wi-Fi Ranger or cell booster? If so, which ones? Okay, Wi-Fi for the Wi-Fi booster. We have a Radio Labs uh, Captify unit. Not totally happy with it because it's only a 2.4 gigahertz uh, system, and some campgrounds are now going over to a 5 gigahertz, which is the 5.8 gigahertz setups. And so, if they have a 5.8 gig, doesn't work with our booster, and kind of is a pain. So we've been looking at going to the Wi-Fi Ranger for that reason. Kevin and I have been talking about that. Uh, Wi-Fi Ranger has some issues as far as some of the security issues and some of the issues as far as being able to uh, make changes to it. Uh, it's not open. Help me out here, Kevin. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not open source. So you can't make changes to it, which for a guy like Kevin is an issue because he knows how to work that. For the I don't. The world. For the rest of the the normal planet, uh, I, I think the Wi-Fi Ranger is fine, and I'm looking at maybe going to that in the future because I will say the guys at Radio Labs were awesome at first, and now they have absolutely sucked 
as far as getting back to me with any kind of customer service whatsoever. And I don't normally complain about customer service, but they've really sucked. I've tried contacting them on Facebook, emails, and there's just no response. And to me, that is not a company that I want to continue to do business with. So that's what you get for not answering your emails and Facebook. Yeah. Well, Linda said, Lorena, you're a saint. Thank you, Linda. I know what, what? you mean. I know what you mean. That is just okay. uncalled for, Linda. Uh, Ladiki, Probably true, but it's just uncalled for. Well, to put out with him, yes, I am. No, he puts up with me, too. It's fine. Yeah, see? Just, even, just you guys don't see that, but he puts up with me, too. Does she have that much to put up with? Yeah, see? Look. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's why we're gonna need to do the live with family around because they know you too well. <laughs> but Didi, how did you get Wi-Fi at Home Depot when you don't have their password? Love you guys. But then another person say Paul Nonia said uh, Home Depot Wi-Fi yeah. is not a secure network. Nope. It's free. Free. Well, here's the thing: it's not a secure network. If it's public, it's not secure. So, yeah. so that's it. But it's free, and Lowe's and Home Depot are great because nobody is hooking up to their Wi-Fi. Yeah. It, here's a here's a, a tip for all of you guys. How many got in here? Almost 300 people. 290 people. Pro tip: Lowe's Wi-Fi rocks because nobody uses it there. And so, if you need a place to get Wi-Fi for a few hours, pull into a Lowe's. We throw up the Wi-Fi booster, and we don't even need the booster. You just park close to Lowe's, and it works. It's it's awesome. Uh, Walmart Wi-Fi sucks because everybody's on it. Starbucks sucks. Everybody's on it. Wal um, McDonald's. If you want great Wi-Fi, Lowe's for me has been the best. Home Depot works okay. Yes. Uh, let me see. Where are we, Lorena? Come on now. No, Marianne, I was looking at Marianne's comment. We oh. bought a new car based on the fact that it can be towed behind a coach. We don't even own a coach yet. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm curious what kind of car it is. Is it a stick or is it – I've been told now that the Honda, you do some push a button, hold your nose, CRV. this, turn the key, and then it will tow four down. I don't know how that works, but my daughter says her pilot will tow four down, and it's an automatic. I don't know how that works. But. I don't know. Doug, it's awesome in Vegas. Rode my bike today to Perum. Go to the numbers for tonight. Uh, thank you, Doug. It's like, yeah, it's Thanks, Doug. nice weather down here too, actually. Yeah. And it's like somebody asked for the weather down here. It I'll, was today 70 degrees in the daytime and a night mid 40s, kind yeah. of thing, but it's going to go lower. I loved riding motorcycles in the Vegas area, Doug. North Shore Highway between there and Logandale, amazing. Uh, we used to own the little biker store up there on the mountain at Mountain Springs Saloon. We used to own that little biker store in behind there when it was called Biconic. I don't know if you ever went in there and met us, but yeah. Yeah, we used to own it. Uh, Lawrence Constantine, just remember to drive really fast so you skip all over the bumps on the Alaska Highway. Okay, I, I'm in for that. Karen, if you ever find yourself back in New Jersey, I have a full hookup for you at the New Jersey Shore. Wow, wow. very nice. Brian, what do, you, what do you have to offer? We got another offer on the table. That's different, uh, different places. <laughs> no, it's New Jersey. She's in New Jersey. The New Jersey Shore. So, oh, yeah, she's on the, the shore. shore. Ooh. I have well, Brian has hot tub. Brian has hot tub. And yeah. Brian has Michelle. They yeah. like Michelle. Yeah. So yeah. let's see. <laughs> Um, have you always been vegetarian or is there a reason you chose to become mm -hmm. one? So I've been vegetarian probably two years before Paul was vegetarian. The reason I did a totally different reason of why he did it. My reason is like I'm an animal lover and I know like Laura will totally hate me for this because she's like if you're an animal lover you should be vegan. But anyway, it's like baby steps, baby steps at the end of the day. So I'm an animal lover, so I didn't want to kill animals. And for me, it was the same of the life of a cat or a dog that we have at our house, the same as the life of a cow or a pig or a chicken. So I started being vegetarian because of that. Um, I know I respect everybody's beliefs, so if you eat meat, I'm not against you. Do you whatever you I made fun do. of her for two years. I said I'm she, not eating the rabbit food. I'm yes. going to continue to eat my meat and chicken and all that. I made fun of her. Yes. I made a trip to Canada to visit old high school buddies and stuff, and everybody up there was dying around me. Cancer, heart problems, lung disease, this and that. And I was like, I, I, it really scared the heck out of me. I came back to Vegas. I watched a movie called Forks Over Knives. That night we went into our – and this was three years ago, so I've been vegetarian now for three years. 
went into the closet, into the uh, pantry, got rid of processed stuff and dairy and mm -hmm. just, uh, we went nuts. I, like I told Lori, I'm in 100%, let's, let's do this. And for me, it was a health scare. I wanted to be around for a few more years to be able to annoy her. And I figured that I needed to be healthy to be able to do that. I, I'm not a big animal guy. I, like, I'm not a big cat and dog fan, and it, that wasn't it for me. But I still don't believe that animals should be abused just because we need something to eat. And I knew that if I educated myself, I could find other options, then I, w I was in for that. I'm not that, uh, that close-minded that, that anything is, is not possible to make the change. You know, my mom makes me crazy. I'm going to talk about her because she's not here. She will <laughs> not change Even for anything. Try. She Even won't try. try. And I don't, I don't care if anybody changes. You, it's totally up to you. you guys. Eat what you want. You know, the whole kill it and grill it thing, though, drives me crazy because none of you guys are killing anything. Most of you. Most of you. 90% of you. If you're out and you're a hunter and you go out and hunt something and you drag it back to your truck and you slice it up and you're going to eat that, more power to you, but we had a friend of ours in Canada. All she did all night was make fun of us. The whole kill and grill it, kill and grill it. Nobody's killing anything. She and goes, grilling to anything. And goes, goes to Walmart and goes to Walmart and picks up your food. So you have no idea yeah. what it's like. I never ate fish after the first time I caught a fish, and my dad made me fillet that thing and cut it open. I was like, never again did I eat another piece of fish. So I made fun of her. I was that meat guy. I was always going to eat meat. Always going to eat chicken. The health scare for me was was crazy, and that's when I when I switched. And like I said, energy levels have gone through the roof. Like Lori needed me to be any more energetic, and I just feel better. And I could get hit by a bus tomorrow, who knows? But I feel better about what we're doing now. And the vegan thing is so tough. And and Kevin and Laura, man, it is Kudos a commitment. Kudos to them. They're amazing people. And when people make fun of someone who's vegan, I think it's I think it's ridiculous because they are so committed to to that lifestyle and so committed to uh, being kind to animals. I don't see I don't see a problem with that. I, I think it's amazing. And that's my rant on that. And that, that's a long bit on that. Okay. But but uh, for me it was a health scare and yeah. Three years okay. in, it's all good. Marianne, hey Paul, Bernie has to sell both and if you ever want to sell. He's like, you can go. He's I'm like, in. How do we get there? I don't like selling, so you can go with him. I'm in. Where are we going? How do we get there? So, I, I don't even know where he's at. You got to tell us where you are so I can come. Goblin 2004, from you time traveling, what one location is your all-time favorite? That's a tough one. And I know that a lot of people ask this all the time. Which one is your favorite location? It's like so many places for so many reasons. Yeah. But... There's a few ones that really stand out that we are so happy we have done. I mean, that we are so happy. And one of them is Hubble Rocks. New Brunswick. The tide change. I mean, that was so spectacular and amazing. I mean, even if you don't have an RV, you should yeah. fly and go there. And you, if you cannot travel, you need to watch that video. To see a 40 or 50 foot tide swing yes, is amazing. insane. When the average worldwide is four feet, 40 feet of tide change is ridiculously cool yes yes cape breton was just beautiful cape breton was amazing it's like going to ireland without going to ireland so that was pretty cool of course we've never been to ireland there so. was a few things that we missed that we want to go back to one was newfoundland we wanted to go there yep. and we missed it we missed uh tortuga island on the keys and that's because it was extremely windy and we couldn't snorkel or we couldn't uh, oh, and it, it was sold out the the boat too. Mm -hmm. So there was a few things that we missed that we still have in our so bucket many list. Places. But uh, Acadia, Acadia National Park for hiking and it stuff. Was, oh, and Bar Harbor, the little town before Acadia, it was oh, Bahaba. Bahaba. It's so cute and picturesque. It's what I think made it. Is. So it's right there, uh, Florida. I mean, from Destin to the Keys, we love the beach area. Um, what is and no, it's not Antigua. It's Antigua in Florida, like before leaving Florida on the East Coast. On the East Coast? Yeah, uh, the little town that we went that had the fort and all that. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine. It was Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine is beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. So those are the few places that stand out. Mm -hmm. We love. we like. I mean, Washington D.C. Yeah, was amazing. Oh, D.C. was. So, because we love city too, we love. Mm -hmm. So there's so many areas that we like for so many different reasons. It's just hard to pick and point one. 
that was one of the other reasons that I wanted to right. film this was to, to remember some of these places. And gang, mm -hmm. we live in a freaking amazing country. Like that's why it's so hard to pick out any one place because there's so many amazing, cool places here with so many amazing, cool people. Uh, every time you think somewhere can't be any more amazing, you go somewhere and you meet amazing people then in a very, very cool place. So it's so hard. It's such it's a so cool hard. place. Uh, we are mud fun. What would you say is your average distance of miles you cover on a travel day? It varies a lot. Yeah, it varies a ton. It's like at first was two hundred miles. It varies if we're just hanging out in an area uh, versus if we are trying to get somewhere. Yeah, uh, we're trying to get somewhere like we did from pretty much Hot Springs, kind of like Nashville, Memphis area, Hot Springs to Vegas. We put long we days. We put yeah. long days at uh, that time. We were doing two to three hundred miles a day, which I don't like it's traveling not, that way. Yeah, uh, we were just okay. trying to get back to Vegas before the holidays so that we could spend time with our staff. But I, I would like to keep it at 100, 150 miles a day, to be honest with you. Um, again, somebody had mentioned Technomedia the last time that they have some like 222 thing where they do 200 miles, uh, try to arrive before 2 p.m., and I think spend no less than two days or something like that. I think that's, I I, that's kind of cool. Very sad. I don't know. The yeah. last two is the right one, but yeah. yeah. But don't travel too fast. Like no, we're trying, even, slow we're down. trying to slow down even right now. Um, it says Joe Cotro is like bring Gaskins to Alaska to be safe. Oh, yeah, that's a good advice, actually. Uh, Patrick McBride, love the vid, guys. We are weekend warriors and convinced my wife to get a travel trailer by showing her your videos. Ooh, so Sorry about that. Did it work? I don't think it probably worked, did it? It's a matter of time then, full timing. <laughs> no, not everybody likes full timing. Um, Byron will be nice if Laura talk a bit more. Laura is not only shy. Laura or this Lorena? No, Laura. Yeah, yeah. Laura is shy in video, but not. It's not only that she's shy. It's like she feels like it's not her channel and it's not her gig, so she gives us a space. Obviously, Kevin doesn't have. Kevin that. doesn't give a shit. <laughs> but it's like Laura just like has a different side of it. So I respect her and what she's doing. I mean, she's she's free to say whatever she wants in the channel but laura is more like lorena they don't say anything unless they have something important to say and kevin and i are just like just spewing stuff yeah. for no reason yes it's true <laughs> and are you going to take extra tires to alaska we have a spare tire we have a spare tire i think it's we up under make, there we need to make sure it's i've never checked to see if it has air in it but we do have a spare tire we need to make sure it's we okay probably we, we will probably take at least rubber with us because i know someone says that tires aren't easy to find that you might be able to find someone to repair it but you can't find rubber so we'll probably take a couple tires we've been told that's a good idea it's such a pain though <laughs> uh ted tpms paul i still haven't put my extensions on yet that's ted d all right, Ted. I have I've got the new ones. The salt, more solid. They're they're not solid, but they're the. Uh, um, oh shoot! I just drew a blank. They're not the solid ones, but they are. Uh, they're not diamond plate. Oh my goodness! I just lost stainless braided. They're braided. stainless steel braided lines. Thanks, Lori. Lori's you know. Uh, I do have the stainless steel braided ones. I was going to use the airless ones, and I, I talked to Ted about this. I tried the airless ones, and they sucked. They were horrible. I couldn't get them to to take air. I couldn't get them to uh, release the air. I couldn't get them to read. So I went to just a regular stainless steel, a six-inch stainless steel braided line. I haven't put them on yet. I've had them for a month now, two months. But I am going to do that before we leave El Paso and try to get the TPMS on. It has been how long? 12 months. I'll install someday. More than that. Okay, continue. Oh, now it's convenient to continue. See you guys how it is. <laughs> it's like Dusty Rooster. Uh, come to West Michigan next summer. We have the best beaches and great breweries. I feel like they know me too well the by now. The Upper Peninsula, yeah. Uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is, uh, is is really, really nice, and we do need to get up there. We were so close, we just didn't have the time before I we know. knew the snow was going to fly. 
because they have even a national park there too. Yeah, that we missed. it's it's beautiful. Uh, chasing abnormal. We love the bloopers at the end of the bit. You should do a video of only bloopers. It will be all about pole them. The problem is, is I don't. I rarely make mistakes. It will be literally all about you, baby. I love doing the bloopers as well. Um, but we've gotten better at not having them, I guess. But but when they happen, it's funny. I love putting those on at the end because sometimes I'm I'm laughing at myself when I can't get stuff out. I get stuck on stuff, and of course, you know, you saw Kevin the one day. If he just spits something out, or Laura Lorena spits something out that gets stuck in my head, I can't get the words out. It's fun. What? There's some comments I can agree. Why? Uh, Are they saying that you're hot or, no, or we're calling us names? I, I'm Somebody's even, being nasty? I'm not even going to go there. They're here, talking let me see. about sexual stuff. Let me see. Anyway. Which one? Here, let me see. No, I'll really move it. No, I want to see. You guys are talking about sex? Let's it's talk like, about Russ, sex, baby. Is there anywhere you will recommend to skip that was highly recommended? Skip uh, that was highly yeah. recommended. Disney? What? No, I'm just joking. I'm just Are joking you crazy? I know it's his favorite. Disney. <laughs> um, uh, I I want to know what they're talking about. Uh, they're obviously very comfortable with us. If they're talking about sex or somebody just being nasty. I don't know. It's even saying yes. Report me. L L M A I. Just go to like what place would we skip if? Something that somebody recommends us, and we will say, oh, that, oh, there is one, but. I don't want to say it. Why? Because. Wh whisper and then I'll say it. No, I, I agree with that though. Like Devil's Den. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Every, you know, we had seen on several YouTube channels that Devil's Den was this amazing place. And it was okay at best. Like I think we were, we, did we rate it as a, in the area or did we rate it as a day trip? I don't remember if we were redoing know. the rating thing I at just the time. Feel, I just feel bad because I know that when we met Mark and um, Caleb, I mean, they told us it was a must do. It was like they enjoy so much that stuff. And when we went, I didn't feel that way. It's different strokes for different folks, though. There's, there's things that it's we true. like that people watching are not going to like. I mean, that's it's just true. life. It is true. Right? So, Doug, Paul, would you want a smaller or larger RV? Uh, I guess we have covered that. I mean, it's like a smaller for now, maybe in the future a larger, because every time I see a 40 foot, like they almost have a bowling alley in there. It's like, I'm kind of like jealousy a little bit. So, but for our type of traveling yeah. right now, it doesn't fit our lifestyle or type of traveling, but maybe, who knows? It's like once in the future. Yeah, Lori and I have talked about that. Like a 30 footer would be better for us because it allows us more options for, for parking and, and getting around and things. But if our style of travel changed where we were only going to drive interstates and go park to park to park, then yeah, 45 foot diesel pusher would be awesome. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not in, it's not in the cards right now. It's just not our style of travel right now. Okay. Mark McCabe or McCabe or something like that. Chances of M E meaning Maine. I don't know. Heading to Mexico for a long visit. I love to see camping on the other side of the border before you can get through the upcoming wall. <laughs> Let me make this political, for, please, please. Um, well, camping is actually we met a lady in. Wait a second, Kevin said Kevin just sent me a text and he says I need to make him an admin so he can block a jackass in the comments. Who's the jackass? Guys, you just like just trust this jackass. Just let him be. It's like he likes love, so yeah. If Don't somebody worry about somebody it. needs a hug, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's fine. Feel free to completely slam the guy, whoever it is, if he's yeah, being a jackass. He's not being really jackass. He's just being a jackass to everybody. But anyway, um, I have to say, it's like we met the lady in Albuquerque that she traveled with a forty foot diesel pusher. Uh, into Mexico already six times and this lady gave us a ton and a lot of information told us like where to find great resources to camp over there because even me as a Mexican it's not like we see RVs here it's not like a thing over here so I'm afraid of if not safety I'm afraid of infrastructure over here right so but this lady told me exactly where can I get some information so we are going to go there and we're going to show you guys some places. Some places might be very, we're not expecting anything like the U.S. I mean, U.S., 
You guys have no. to think about this. This is a first world country, and we're talking about Mexico as a third world country. It's like never have the same expectations for Mexico. So we have to lower expectations that it's going to be more rustic and more bare and lower amps on the RV. Like I saw a lot of uh, complaints that it was 15, 20 amps, but uh, that's why we want to put solar. Mm -hmm. So we don't depend on it. Uh, but we will show you. We will totally show you about that. Yeah, that that's going to be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't see any more questions. Won't it be funny if you H book is nomadic fanatic? Oh, H book is a hater. That would be funny. What's that? H S H book is the actually one kind of like been. You know, oh, 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 SH book. Wouldn't it be funny if he was a nomadic fanatic? Well, that'd be yeah. sad, but you know, I, I don't think I don't think that he's that person. But uh, you know, what are you gonna do? There's always, no matter where you go, there's always gonna be assholes, and you don't focus on those people because that's that's what they want. But please feel free to focus on that person no, and completely trash them. Here's the thing: that's what they want. They want attention because yeah. I feel that they need attention and they're lonely in their life. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's sad. You, it's you sad when you don't have any friends and you're in your mom's basement and you all you have is your computer keyboard and what are you going to do? Uh, Mark, any chance of you two singing on your videos? Hell no. You don't want to hear me <laughs> singing. <laughs> singing? What in our time together, Mark, has made you think that we are able to sing at all? I know. It's like because here's the thing. Kevin and I could do Islands in the Stream. We could do... Oh, uh, my God. Um, who is it? Uh, Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. We do that. Oh my God! No, yeah, no. But here's the thing: at the end of the day, is like I know all the good things I can do, all my strengths, and I know that singing is not one of them. Like that's why I don't go to karaoke. Um, your New England voyage was the best, and definitely the whole Canada thing. Oh, thank you, Rick. Hey Rick, what's happening? Rick S. Rick is a longtime watcher and, and always contributes positively. And guys, we always recognize that when you, when you're a positive contributor in the in the community, we we want you guys to know that we love that and we suit we really appreciate that and we think it's really cool that you guys interact with each other. So amazing, thank you, thank you so much, Rick. And yeah, it it is incredible over there, and we had a great time. You know, again, we heard so much about. Even I lived in Ontario, Canada, and I heard so much about. Oh, if you go to Quebec, the people are rude; they're not going to speak English and go through all that. We did not find that to be the case at all. Eastern Canada was amazing, but Quebec was equally as amazing. And Montreal and Quebec City were were awesome. It was really, really cool. Okay, just to let you guys know that person is blocked, so no more comments coming in. It's like many people say, please block that person. Done. Uh, Karen Smith, uh, Karen and Lou sold my hot tub to give my fifth wheel a full 50 amp hookup in my backyard. That leaves my front driveway 30 amp hookup available. Yes. Where is that? It's not like I'm inviting myself there, but... No, I'm inviting I'm myself. Where, where are we? saying... Uh, doesn't say where Karen Smith. Oh, see, you dangle the carrot in front of us, Karen, and then you don't tell us where it is. So now yes. you can't come there. Uh, we appreciate the great videos. My wife wants to know how you financially survive on the road. Well, we have a business. Yes. And we have a very extremely profitable, profitable YouTube channel. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and then the the whole, you know, something that Kevin and I don't talk about a whole lot is is our our mobile stripper business. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot of money with it. It's it's not been very successful, but we're we're continuing to work on that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a YouTube channel about that later on. Kevin and I will. Oh, John Tennessee, Paul Lorena, have a great idea. Have a campground rating system, possibly one to five skull rating. That's a tough uh, one because this one. Is Lori a, thinks I'm a whiner. He's a whiner, and he has his expectations are way up there. <laughs> Uh, so I think that's a tough one, and I guess we can always read. I, we try to comment always about the bathroom, so we think that's very important. More if you travel in a class B, or if you really use a lot of your bathroom. Tenters and yeah. So we try to read the bathrooms and also uh, the campground as a whole, but I don't know if we will get that much into it though. Right. We we you know we give you guys some information on the on the campgrounds. I am hard on them. It, it's like you're taking 
somebody's money and your business is to provide us with a, a place to stay overnight. And yeah, I understand they're not all going to be nice, but at the same time, if they're making an effort, like a lot of times we see that the campground isn't that nice, like North Louisville, for example, the campground, super tight. It's right on a railroad track. It's not the most attractive campground, but the staff there was amazing. They were mm -hmm. so good. They were so accommodating. It's a tiny campground. They could have said, I'll just go down four sites and your site's right there. But no, they jump in a golf cart. They drive you down there. They stand in front of the site. They wave you into the site. That's amazing. So you can make an effort, even though your campground may not be the prettiest, you can still make an effort in other ways. And yeah. bathrooms are super important, I think, because it shows you that it, that they care about the people that are visiting. We're like big believers of how you do anything is how you do everything. So if the bathrooms are bad or something like that, there's other things also happening. But uh, again, it's like if your idea of camping is just weekend warrior, we know a <clears> lot of you guys are weekend warriors. You're looking for camping yeah. and do a campfire and hanging out there. It's like it's totally different idea of what full timers want. And uh, you might pay higher dollars for that campground because you're it's only one week in a month or something like that or two weekends a month. Full timers were paying like a lot, like sometimes right. even on the East Coast, like the right. full month of camping in different places. So we're looking for different things. Right. But that's that's why I wanted to just because <clears throat> I know that there was people complaining about or not. No, nobody's complaining. I shouldn't say that. But people were questioning, you know, my thing on full timers. In the last video and we had a couple people say well hey get over it that's that's the way it is you know some people full-time mm -hmm. let me explain that a little bit when we we're full-timing as well when i go into a campground i'm looking at a campground from the aspect of somebody who's going there on vacation somebody who's going to go there for a weekend not not from my standpoint my standpoint is like we only need it for a couple of nights so for me what do i care i'm only there for a couple of nights but if you're taking your family there for a week and you drive into a campground that's full of just absolute trash, full-time RV campers, or the, the place isn't a, a nice place to go, you're there on vacation. You went there, you paid money to go stay in an attractive campground, and it's and it's not attractive. To me, that's that's not cool. I'm not talking I'm going, about from my standpoint. I'm going back, like for example, where we stay in Philadelphia, like literally a parking lot. For us, it's convenient because we're there to visit the city itself as a full timers and traveling across the country. And it worked but awesome for that. It worked awesome, but if you're with your family and want a campfire, it's not the right place for you. So what's good for ones is not good for other people. Right. And then, so that's very, that's a great extreme example too, because like you wouldn't right. go there for a week, right? That's yeah. not where you would go. You wouldn't want to go to a really nice campground. I would go there for a week, but just to visit the city and the places in the right. city. Right, but if you go camping. if you go to a campground where you want to go camping and have a nice outdoor experience with your family, and then you go somewhere where there's people with fridges outside of their campers, and they've got the the big structures over top, that's that's not a campground to me. That's a trailer park. Yeah. So, anyways, that's that was my explanation of because I'm I'm not trying to be mean to full timers be, that you choose to live there. That's awesome. But don't have all your stuff out exposed for everyone else to see it because other people are there to go to an outdoor camping experience and enjoy the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, I'm, that's I know brand. I'm going to get beat he, up. He always has that brand. And I told you his expectations are way up there. Yeah. People beat me up about that because I, okay. I'm hard There's on full time. YouTube RV. What did you buy for your RV but found you never use it? I don't think we've had anything. Like we, well, we so went far the TPMS, but the TPMS. <laughs> okay, yeah, the TPMS. I bought it and no, but I bought it because everybody no, was because I made jumping on the it. TPS train. Because I made you buy it. And there's certain things. I'm an old school guy. There's certain things that I don't find necessary. It's like, well, wait a minute. I can just check my freaking tires every day. And if your tire isn't having an issue, then you're not gonna have a blowout so mm -hmm. of course I'm gonna wind up in a ditch next week because the tire blows out and I, I'm not seeing it but if you if you take care of your tires you're checking them on a regular basis for me I didn't understand why I needed something to monitor when you're monitoring something every single minute every single second that kind of stuff makes you crazy if you just look at things when you stop you check them to make sure that they're not uh, uh, low then then it's fine okay. but we really didn't we we were fairly uh, not frugal, but we didn't buy a whole lot of stuff right uh, out of the gate. Oh, we did. 
No, we did. And I think that's why we had to stop ourselves because when you start RVing or for us, we started full time, we bought so much stuff, we're spending a lot of money just on stuff. On stuff, yeah. So yeah, but... we had to slow down or buy like a cheaper version of it. And at this point, we have stopped using some stuff and replace it with other right. stuff. So like we've stepped up the, the hose that we use for water. I bought this. Uh, I can't remember how it's called. But we, I'll future, show you in future videos. TV. but And I think it's below our videos in the yeah. description. It's all awesome. I've waited so long to get one. The Berkey has been amazing. amazing. I mean, there's so much stuff like that that has been amazing, but that like stuff that we stop using, using, I'm there's trying nothing. to think right now. I mean, I cannot think about it right now, but let's keep it. Sure, disaster. So yeah. we'll be able to answer that question when you guys aren't around. Judy, have you ever crossed paths with Keep Your Daydream? Yeah. Um, it was a year ago. I yeah, think. a year ago uh, when we first started out on the road. Uh, December 17th, we left Las Vegas. I think we met them on December 18th. So if yeah. you go back to our videos a year ago, there's a video where we meet with uh, Mark and Caleb. It's a very brief meeting at Starbucks just to, to hang out, say hello. Uh, we haven't seen them on the road since then. Great guys. Well, everybody seemed to be in 2017 RVing on the West Coast. We were yeah. on the East Coast. So we were, I think, literally lonely of YouTubers wise, lonely on the road on yeah. the East Coast. Yeah, we, we seem to be the only ones over there and with Kevin and Laura and everybody else seemed to be over over here on the on the West Coast. So next year I think it's gonna be the exact opposite. Everyone's gonna be on the opposite. We'll go back to the East Coast. Yeah, gonna yeah, we're gonna Coast. be on the West Coast. <laughs> but uh I, I will say that that Mark and Trish from Keep Your Daydream, I, I think they do an amazing, amazing job. His editing is is spectacular. And Nathan with Less Junk More Journey, I think his editing is bar none, probably some of the best in the in the RV travel niche anyways. Yes. Awesome. Um, how long have you and Kevin known each other and traveled together? That's from George Gilman. So George, when we were getting ready to 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 leave and live full time. We were starting the whole process through the house thing in our early videos. Kevin was in Vegas and he reached out and said, hey, I'm in Vegas, I watch your videos, we're getting ready to do RVing full time too. And so Kevin reached out and, and said, you know, can we do lunch? And we, we met with Kevin and man, it was like, we're brothers from another mother. I mean, we hit it off immediately and we laughed and laughed and laughed that day. I think we probably spent three hours uh, yeah. together and then we planned on meeting them they they were taking off in September of last year we were going to do December of last year and head that way they were going down into Florida and we thought we'd catch them on the way out of Florida so that's what we kind of did we we kind of brushed off of each other and then caught up each, with each other in uh, the outer banks. Other banks and then it was kind of off and on like shh, shh, yeah, we're about shh, all up the east path, coast but we have uh, somewhat different interests like they love hiking and nature and as we will do that as well But we also love our touristy stuff because we want to go to every downtown or city and see the touristy So sometimes we will just go like part way so we can both see different things and then we will come together at a different place mm -hmm. So that's why we traveled together too because uh, we were going through the same yeah. path and we like each other They're very easy going when it comes to traveling uh, super, super awesome to travel with those two. travel with because we love, we don't like mornings. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so anyway, so it's been great actually yeah. traveling with them. It, there's nothing better than traveling with people that just are whatever. And sometimes it's whatever we do what they want to do. And sometimes it's whatever we do what we want to do. And, and it's, it's, they're just really, really fun to travel with. Yes. Rick Powell, ever thought about voting for a change? And by the way, it's 752. I think we're going to kill it at eight. So no, this is one. the last question, guys. I'm sorry if there is more, uh, but we I shoot also, us messages on Facebook. I also want to talk about 2018, our plans on the channel. Okay, so we'll do this last question, then we'll talk last about 2018. Question, yeah. Rick Pell, what was that? Uh, Rick's a longtime watcher see. as well, and, um, and Rick Powell. Ever thought about voting for a change? Voting? I don't want to die. Rick, I wanted to vote first. In the middle, in the first. middle of the ocean. Actually, that was his first idea that he tried to sell me, and I said, no way. So that's how this whole thing come about, is Lori left me for a month and went to visit her dad, wasn't doing so well in Mexico, uh, Mexico City. Left me alone for a month, so I started thinking, okay, what am I gonna do next? I was kind of you know, bored with life. I'm like, I'm, we're gonna buy a sailboat, and we're gonna go sail around the world. And Lori said, hell no, we're not buying a sailboat. I'm not dying with you in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Exactly. And pretty much. And I was like, oh man. So then uh, 
I started watching the wins and a few others and uh, Technomadia and, and uh, Nomadic Fanatic and started watching. I'm like, hey, this, that might be kind of cool. Lori likes traveling. Maybe we could travel the U.S. And uh, so that's when I brought that up. And, and so that's, that's how we got involved with this. I would love to do some boating. The, the biggest thing, the biggest problem we see with boating is that while you're en route somewhere, so let's say you're leaving Florida and you're going to St. Martin's. Yeah, Florida's cool. St. Martin's is going to be cool, but the six or seven days in the process, you're stuck on that little bitty boat. Like here from, from the East Coast to the West Coast, we have all these little things we can stop and get out of the coach and do all this kind of stuff. In a boat, you don't have that. Uh, but with that being said, what Technomadia is doing, Technomadia, Technomadia, I don't know what it is, know. Technomadia, what they're doing right now with the inner loop, I think it's really cool. So that's something that we may, uh, we may look at in the future. Maybe. How far in the future? In the future. We don't know that. Down, down we, don't the road. Know. we don't know. Down that. the road. We don't know that. He wants too many toys, so it's just hard to. Okay. So anything else? So many, we go? so many good questions. Okay. Well, it's like one continue. more. Stanley Tam. What would you do differently if you were to start again? Stanley, what's happening? How's Toronto? I hear you guys are getting snow. Um, see, it, I, I get to know you guys by the name and where you live, and it's, I love that. It's just amazing. So what what was he saying? Sorry, now that I've Oh my god, Paul. Stanley? I mean it's like what would you do differently if you were to start again? Buy a I smaller say, coach. Um just don't go crazy. First of all, if you're you're gonna if we were gonna start again, I mean we didn't have a running coach, but I'm okay with the coach we have because we got to learn how we travel. Right. So I would say that's a good thing, but also not buying here, that much here, stuff. I would say not buying. Don't buy too much stuff until you know what you need. You think you know what you need, and you bunch all this stuff, right? And you're spending all this money, and six months on the road, you're like, oh, I didn't need this, I didn't need this, and you start discarding a lot of the stuff, a lot of the money you already spent. See, but we we really didn't have that because that was one of the questions. We really didn't have that, where we blew out a bunch of stuff that we had that we didn't need. Um, we kept downsizing as far as needing like needing less shoes and things like that. Kept getting rid of that stuff, but uh, we didn't really have that. But I will say again, and we say it so much, guys: do not buy a freaking new coach for your first, first coach. coach yeah. If you want to buy a new coach down the road, have at it. I mean, if you if, again, money's no object, and you like getting crushed on depreciation, have at it. Buy a new coach. Don't buy a new coach your first coach. You buy a thirty-five foot coach your first coach, and then all of a sudden you go. Oh, should have bought a 24 foot or should have bought a 45 foot or I should have bought a travel trailer, not a class A or I should have bought a class C and not a travel trailer. I should have bought whatever, whatever. your travel. You didn't realize what your travel mode of travel was going to be or your your style of travel was going to be. You see it with a lot of the actual YouTubers right now that most of them have are switching switched. coaches. They have switched coaches throughout the year or two years. They've been on the road. Because that happens. It's like you didn't know how you like to travel until you're on the road. It's like, oh, this is my style. I need to go smaller. Or this is my style. I need something larger. So it's like until you know by something maybe new at that point. But before that, your first coach is like just go like smaller, go use and just find how you travel. We don't all travel. We're not right. And it's not like it's not, our lifestyle is not for everybody. Right. It's like we understand that. It's like you need to define and know your type of traveling. And that's why doing research, like watching a bunch of channels like this, doing that research first mm -hmm. is so important. so important. So important. Like, oh, I, I like the way those guys are traveling. That might suit me. Oh, I don't like what they're doing here. Oh, but I like what they're doing over there. And all these different channels watching, is a towable better for you? Is a class A better for you? Maybe a C. Find that by looking at it, researching as much as possible first. What what would we do differently? That's a hard question. I'm gonna have to put like a little like pin on that one and answer it another time because it's a good question actually. Yeah, I, I um, think we would have went smaller. So. Shayla, do you find that boondocking places are trash? Do you pick up their trash? I think being a boondocker, you need to take care of Mother Earth. We all need to put our trash. Um, here's the thing. I have here's when he gets an all with trashy campgrounds i get annoyed with garbage on the ground like so annoyed because these people are trying to go and spend time in the outdoors and nature and then they trash it and leave 
And that's just so mind boggling for me. How is that you love nature, spend time in nature when you're yeah. doing that? We went to the one of the far roads, uh, Williams. So Williams, Williams near the Grand Arizona. Canyon on the way here. And when we stopped there, we saw it around the fire pit that they have, and there was so much garbage, uh, beer bottles, beer cans, and a diaper. Diapers. I mean, they have razors. So razors. It's like, like that. We actually, Paul, grab a trash bag and he put all the garbage in a bag and we put it in the back of the car and the next dumpster we dump it out when we went out of that spot to get on the road at the end of the actual uh far road to get on the actual main road uh paul stopped to check on straps on the dolly and he gets off the car the, the rv and there's little like 15 uh beer cans, beer cans and bottles just right there so i picked all those up too yeah, and it's like obviously it shouldn't be our job to do that. We do it because we love nature and we want to see it as pristine as yeah, we can. We want to be in the great outdoors. But I become such a hater of all those people that litter on nature. Like they go and spend time in nature and then they litter it. It's the weirdest mindset ever that let's go out and enjoy nature and then trash it while we're out there. It, yes. It's mind boggling. But yes, we, we clean up not only after ourselves if we're out boondocking, but we pick up around us as well. I have such a hard time just getting out of the coach. We boondocked at a place just outside of Benson, Arizona on the way here. We were just parked on the side of the road and I was like OCDing, trying not to pick up all the garbage just around us on the side of the road. So yeah, that, that's a tough one. But gang, if you pack it in, pack it out. And, and if you are somewhere and you see that there's a little bit of trash laying around, pick it up, take it yeah, with you and I mean, it's not that hard. get rid of it at the next gas station. Yes. And last one, now last one, Lori. It's like, Kimmy Lay, sorry if this has been answered. Do you plan to do more boondocking? Well, now that we're in the West Coast, yes. Oh, yeah. East so Coast, much out here. East Coast is just so hard. So many cities don't allow it. Uh, there's really no places, no BLM areas, no forest roads. There is nothing like that where you can boondock. So it's extremely hard to boondock. Like, so that's why we didn't do boondock on the East Coast. It's just too hard to do it. We mm -hmm. just did like overnights on Walmarts, overnights in Cracker Barrels, overnights here and there but no actual boondocking. West Coast is full of boondocking. We have not done it yet because we've been in, in the West at Coast. Williams, at Williams on the fire well, road. Just a little bit, but we have been on the West Coast at work where we have to be in Las Vegas, or we have been here in El Paso where we have to be with my mom. And his mom is staying with us, so we need to be plugged in for heaters and all that stuff. So, so far we have not done it, but we plan on doing more of that. Yes. Cool. Okay, so, so let's do that's, plans moving yes. forward 2018. <clears throat> so, uh see so you want to keep going right no, 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 no. so 20 2018 we are we are not going to change much like I, I know we had mentioned uh in either the last uh live or in one of our posts that uh we might change it up for 2018 we're not going to change too much i just now feel like I, i've been camping my whole life but kind of just professionally camping for the last year so i i didn't really feel like we could uh offer that much up to to people as far as uh, input or, input or reviews or or, like or or give you guys much as far as how the how to on on mm -hmm. how this stuff should happen so now that we've been a year and we've seen more of it and what we feel we can contribute to people that are new coming into the coming into the lifestyle is more of the how-to stuff so i'm gonna we're gonna do more of that um how to do certain things like for me setting up the rv is just like it's a basic thing it's just something that you do but i realize right now with as hot as rving is that not everybody knows how to set up or as we saw when we were in prince edward island not everybody knows how to use a dump hose they think that you can pull up to the dump station and rip the handle and out it comes so we're going to do more of that basic stuff as well if you guys see a how-to video that you already know how to do that stuff, just ignore it. Yes, I mean, we want to add on. It's not like we're going to replace we're our travel replace, videos. No. It's not like we're going to change it. We're I love doing that add stuff. on into the channel, but it's going to be different. So like how-to videos, and might be simple stuff that if you have been RVing for 30 years or 20 years, you know how to do it. But for some people that are coming from different countries or it's just their first RV, they don't know how to do it and they need to know the proper a uh, way to do stuff. So we're going to do some how to videos. You don't have to watch them. You can skip them. Feel free to make fun of us. We are going to like you guys even right here on the live chat. You guys ask a lot about products, the TPMS and the Berkey and the composting toilet and that kind of stuff. 
So at this point, we've been for one year with the composting toilet. We want to do a video about it. We have the Berkey. We have been already for a few months with it, and we love it. So we're going to do a video of how it works. It's like if you need it or maybe if you don't need it because you might not need it. So it's like we want to just like put stuff out there for you to help you out. And I think that's the biggest change that we're going to do. And those videos obviously are not going to be as like, crazy editor like Paul does with the travel videos that he loves to put the music and all that. This might be totally different. This might be more simple videos. Oh, I've got some cool new editing stuff coming out too. And uh, yeah, he's like, he's watching another great YouTuber. If you guys uh, can see Peter McKinnon, he's mm. a great YouTuber and he's in a lot of his uh, editing stuff from him. So yeah, some cool uh, stuff. but anyway, it's like so that's the way it's gonna change in 2018. But the travel stuff will continue, the that's fun will stuff. continue, yes. meeting you guys will continue. Yes, uh, as reach much as we out can. on Facebook, yeah, and as much as we can. Uh, you know, we, we can't meet everybody if we blow through your town and we don't get a chance to meet you. Sorry, I know in Las Vegas, it we sucks. miss you guys, but it's like we'll be back. We have their business, we'll be back. But sometimes it's hard to just get to people, but reach out. Re reach out to us on Facebook. It's, that's always the best mm -hmm. bet. And uh, the travel will continue. The fun will continue. Uh, more how tos on the way. Uh, more stuff with Kevin and Laura will happen along the way, uh, especially down in Mexico. And one of the reasons we're going to go down there, not not really one of the reasons we want to go down there, because we think it'll be cool. Uh, we hope to be able to show people that that it's very possible to it's do that. Doable. That it's doable that it's not as scary as everybody uh, makes it out to be, and, uh, and or it's scary as everybody makes it out to be, e either or, we're gonna find out one way or another. And uh, we're gonna continue to have a lot of fun in, in, in 2018. Mm -hmm. No uh, plans right now to change the coach. Uh, we do have plans for some solar and some other additions. We're changing but the coach by the, by the name side. And somebody still owes you guys a tour. And as you guys yeah, know, yeah. You know, sometime by 2019, somebody made a comment the other day, by 2019, I'll have a TPMS video out. So, very, very fun. Guys, it has been an amazing uh, trek this last year in the United States. It, it's It's been so cool. We've yeah. met so many neat people, saw so many really cool things, and been to so many really neat places. It's It's been incredible. So, we don't want that to stop. We're going to continue yeah, moving forward. So cool to see meet you guys either like on the road or meet you guys through online and your comments i saw somebody that says we follow you from the beginning but never made a comment thank you guys so much for your support and it's like 2017 was a great year for us just uh meeting new friends wise it's like it has been a great year so thank you for everything have a very happy new years and I, I knew we were both going to break down at the end of this video. Have a very happy new year, guys. You have no idea how much you guys mean to us, how much this community means to us. It's It's been incredible. It really has. And, and we appreciate you guys so much. I know that's so cliche, but you can tell that from the bottom of our hearts, we, we really do appreciate this. And we had no idea that this was going to go this way. And the fact, again, we've got 300 people on it for two hours is just incredible amount of support and we appreciate it okay guys happy Love new year guys. see you guys in the new year bye bye Mwah. Mwah.